Hello, hello everybody. We are going to be continuing. Uh, after five billion years, we are going to be continuing our Ace Attorney Trilogy journey with Trials and Tribulations. If I remember correctly, I was informed that, in fact, the... What I presume to be the final case episode, diddly D, is, uh, in fact, not the final episode. Uh, so, yeah. More be more Ace Attorney than I was expecting, but not a, not bad because I enjoy Ace Attorney. I just uh, brain got into a weird place and uh, very frustrating. But now we're gonna return and uh, give it a shot, uh, try try to do it, knock it off the list. <laughs> I meant to do it sooner, but uh, then I got wrapped up in Pokemon Coliseum, and that was a fun time. Also, uh, we will be continuing Coliseum at some point in the future, nearby. <laughs> Don't want it to linger on like Ace Attorney here, where we do the, at least some of the post-game. Even most of the post-game, because... <laughs> we found a, I found a good way to do things. But, enough being enough. Ah, uh, da 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 Let's see. Hmm. Episode 4, turn about beginning. So yeah, for some reason my brain was like, oh, is that episode 5? I was looking for episode 5. My, my brain my brain is an idiot. Well, we're gonna, this should be it. God, it has been so long since we played, but shall we, we shall go play now. Because I, well, let's see. This should be it, because episode 3, episode 3, yep, episode 4. Let's go. It's been a bit, so I might have forgotten the voices. The girl, let her go! Alright, three people on a bridge, hostage, person with gun. So, shut up, C come closer, and I kill her! Like a maniac. Sorry, but you're not going to get the chance. Is that Mia? <laughs> okay, that's, oh, oh dear, somebody got shot and fell. <laughs> I also need to remember names. Mia, Maya, da da da. Phoenix in a hospital. I'm reading through the file of an old court case. It was the first case of my longtime mentor, Mia Fey. Fugitive data. Interesting. Name Terry Fowles. Kidnapping, murder, what happened to his face, death penalty. Seriously, what did that to his face? Fugitive movements. After escaping, Fowles met with and then murdered Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne. Recaptured on Eagle Mountain about eight hours after his escape. Hmm, Hawthorne. For some reason, that name seems familiar. Her very first client was a death row inmate who had recently broken out of prison. That was a whole year before me and I ever met. Is this the case that she took and then, like, broke her spirit? Six years earlier. Mia Fey, first trial. Because, yeah, we... If I remember correctly... Didn't we... Did Again, it's been like five billion years. But, like, wasn't Mia Fey's first... Well, not first case, but the case that we began Trials and Tribulations with. Wasn't that, like, her second case and, like, her first one was a, a whole bad time? So I don't know. It's been a long time. But, yeah, this is interesting. A flashback. I like the framing device of it being from... Phoenix's perspective as well. So, yeah. Ba -ba -ba. Uh, I'm so nervous. I feel like I'm going to die. I never should have accepted this case. You probably shouldn't have. He was a death row inmate. He escaped jail. But at the same time, we don't know... Valerie Autopsy Report. Stabbed with a knife in the back. Died from blood loss between 4 and 5. Oh, I also realized this is probably the worst time to, like, break from Ace Attorney because this is late in the game. This is when logic and, like, understanding need to be done and done good. Like, this is when things need to be done good. Eek! Why, why is he carrying a ball and chain with him? Uh, good morning. 
Don't be so jumpy, Mia. Also, going to save. So that we can. I didn't do nothing. I swear. I didn't kill nobody. You do look pretty guilty if you ask me. And like, now this case has got me like paranoid because, again, fairly certain that we were informed in the the first case of Trials and Tribulations that Mia's first case, or like at least her last case, went very poorly or something. Something happened in her last case that made it so like she didn't want to do cases again. And it wasn't until Phoenix, in which I forget the exact reason. Didn't? I forget the exact reason. But yeah, it was Phoenix's case that she then came in and did it again. Although that's kind of interesting from a, pers like a pacing perspective. Because the first case is one that came after this one. And this is the fourth case. Right? I'm, I'm, I'm not being dumb, am I? Uh, yeah, this is, well, this is the fourth episode. But let's go on. Terry Falls, my first client. So it is her first case. Sentenced to death five years ago and now a prison escapee. Just relax, Mia. Make small talk and try to relax him. Er, uh, um, so why did you escape anyway? Uh, uh, oh God! Ah, I'm sorry! Oh, wrong. And Jesus Christ, that is kind of a horrifying picture. Look at his eyes. Oh, oh this is a poor man. Oh, he's gnawing on his ball and chain. Uh, it's, it's mesmerizing. I can't look away. I'm sorry, I'm sorry! Uh, I did do nothing. I didn't kill nobody. I never, I never lie. I didn't escape from nowhere. But, what, did somebody let him out and he freaked out? Uh, but, Mr. Falls, the police just recaptured you two days ago. Uh, sorry, I told a little lie. Oh, boy. But anyways, I didn't do it. I never killed nobody. Um, sorry for asking, but you're on death row, right? Uh, 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 I'm really, really sorry. They sentenced me to die five years ago, but I was tripped, I tell you. That woman, she lied in her testimony. That's why I got the death penalty. I swear it, I didn't kill her. I could never do that. Two days ago, he escaped from the police wagon when it crashed. All right, <laughs> interesting. Then about eight hours later... A policewoman was murdered before the police could recapture him. So wait. Okay, I, I'm trying to get my timeline right here. So, he's on death row. Already. Then he escapes because the police wagon, the car that he was in, crashed. And between his escaping and her being... And between him escaping and being recaptured, this lady died. And the court record said she died between 4 and 5 p.m. And if it was on the run for eight hours, he must have escaped... Well, it depends. Interesting. The police believe that Terry Falls did it. Um, after you escaped, did you meet a policewoman? Yeah, I did. She's the reason I escaped. So that much is true. He did meet with the victim. But I didn't kill her! She was alive when I left. She was alive! It's true! I can trust him, right? I mean, I should. He is your client. <laughs> if you don't trust your client, why'd you take the case? Ha! Huh. Oh, hey! I, I knew it. I knew you would exist here. Uh, what's your name? What is your name? G Godot, I think. Godot? Yeah. You're not going to figure out the truth just by staring at the guy. Y you're... Why are you here? I came to see how our little kitten was doing all alone in the big scary lion's den. I thought maybe you'd like someone to play with. Uh, where's Mr. Grossberg? Ha! <laughs> that old man is probably still in bed. 
How about he's clutching an empty bottle and mumbling in his sleep? Aren't I good enough? After all, it's me, Diego Marmando. How dare you change your name? Good. Well, I guess <laughs> all his names end in O. Diego, Armando, Gado. But interesting. I wonder what happens to, like, I don't know, colorblind his eyes that turns him into Jordi LaForge? I, I didn't say... So Diego Armando, the finest attorney at Grossberg Law Offices, is here for me? No, no, no. You've got it all wrong. Today, you're the finest. After all, it took an amazing amount of guts to take this case. Imagine, an escaped death row convict for a first client. Yeah, er, thanks. I sure wish I could get out of it, though. Ha! Relax. I just heard some good news. The prosecutor for today is fresh out of his diapers as well. Well? Uh, his name, uh, his name, Edgeworth. His name was escaping me there for a moment. But Edgeworth is on the, like, front of the case this episode. So that means that he's going to be here. And until Phoenix comes along, he hasn't lost a case. Right? So this is, this is boding poorly. Really? However, unlike a certain somebody who I won't mention, he's earned the reputation as a genius since beginning his law career. D genius? Well, it's about time to head in, kitten. Sharpen those claws of yours. It's time to... It's go time. A solitary confinement cell for the condemned must be the world's loneliest place. And that's what my client ran away from. Every other lawyer gave up on him, but not me. When I saw those overflowing eyes and heard that simple childlike voice, I just had a feeling that he was telling the truth. It's been a while, so let's get back in the swing of things. February 16th, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number four. Has been a while since... Oh, hey, it's a completely different judge. What voice? I know that I, I think we've seen you before, like, as a secondary judge, but I don't know what kind of na voice I gave you. Court is now in session for the trial of Terry Fowles. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. I understand the lawyers from both sides are newcomers. B yes, Your Honor. I'm Mia Fey. Miles Edgeworth, Your Honor. So you're the new prosecutor everyone is talking about. They say you joined the prosecutor's office at quite an early age. Matt Twenty, Your Honor. Why, do, why, does he, why does his face seem more beachy than usual? Like, he, like, like, it feels like Edgeworth's face is more handsome than usual. I could just... Then again, I don't know. Also, his outfit, completely different. It's far more ornate than the suits he wears later, which is interesting. It seems a lot more Von Karma. I guess our little kitten hasn't earned herself much of a reputation yet, huh? Come on, Mia. You can't lose, not to someone younger than you. Hmm. <laughs> Young people running a trial. I'm not too sure how I feel about that. Now then, the defendant in this case is currently a felon on death row. Two days ago, he escaped from a police wagon. Is that correct? Precisely. But at the defendant... But the defendant is not on trial for escaping prison. On the day of that the defendant escaped, a policewoman was murdered. So we're here to determine if Mr. Fowles was responsible for her death? You got it, kitten. Well then, Mr. Edgeworth, let's hear your opening statement. Yes, Your Honor. It was five years ago. The defendant, Terry Fowles, was sentenced to death in this very court. His crimes were kidnapping, extortion, and murder. The girl he threw off the bridge was only 14 years old. A truly horrible crime. I remember it well. There was no decisive evidence, so the trial was long and protracted. Oh, is... I wonder how long ago this is. Then again, that case was five years ago. 
So that would have been before the super duper speed round guilty verdict law was put into place. <laughs> Correct. But in the end, what we what finally decided the case was a certain witness's testimony. A witness's testimony. The girl that shot at him. So, from a distance, it looks like Mia, but evidently not. The testimony of Detective Valerie Hawthorne, the person who confronted the, this criminal. She arrested Mr. Fowles at the scene and later testified against him. She said she witnessed Mr. Fowles throw his young victim into the water, into the river. Already, I am suspecting that Hawthorne actually shot the 14-year-old girl. That's what I'm going to suspect. That Hawthorne, in trying to shoot Fowles, killed the victim who, when shot, fell into the river. Or, depends if they found the body or not. And then it's possible that somebody used the escape of Falls when it when the when the police wagon crashed to exact revenge on Hawthorne for the death of the 14-year-old girl. That could be one thing. It depends on how much like Falls is in on it as well. He could be completely innocent, but it could also be that he was involved in some way with the death of Hawthorne, but we'll have to see. For those we, for those who are not aware, Eagle River is well known for its powerful current. Most bodies that fall in, a, fall in are never recovered. So Miss Hawthorne's testimony was the one that put him away. That policewoman you just mentioned, that wouldn't be. Exactly. The victim, the same woman that was killed two days ago. Police Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne, and yes, <laughs> younger Edgeworth's face is drawn differently, and it, it's weirding me out. Aha! I see. The man who was sentenced to death based on her testimony escaped two days ago, with only one thing on his mind, to take revenge against the woman who convicted him. Hmm. Aha! The truth is becoming clear to me now! Huh? Yes, yes. It's quite obvious that the defendant is guilty. We need to go through this normally. But wait a minute, that's not right. At least hear the case before you decide on the outcome, Your Honor. Uh, watch yourself, Miss Fay. I'm not sure I care for your word choice or your tone of voice. Young people these days simply don't know how to respect their elders. It doesn't matter what judge we get, all of them are mad in this universe. Why, you... You're even younger than me, you hypocrite! Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, please call your first witness. I call the detective who is in charge of the initial investigation of this case. Is it Gumshoe? It's Gumshoe! In, like, better clothes. Witness, state your name and occupation. Let's see. Oh, it's been for so long since I did Gumshoe's voice. Gumshoe! Dick Gumshoe! I'm the homicide detective in charge of this case, sir! I finally got promoted to detective division half a year ago! I don't believe anyone asked you about that. Hey, ma'am! You got any idea how much work it takes? W what is it? You... You're really gorgeous. Excuse me? So basically, this is... Aside from the judge, everybody has... Everybody doesn't know what's going on. No, seriously! My heart! It's aching for you! Detective... Pull yourself together and try to be professional. Otherwise, I'll write you up on contempt so quick that something other than your heart will ache. Uh, okay, I, I got it. Now, detective, tell us about the incident. Yes, sir. Right away. The victim was Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne, a veteran on the police force. She was stabbed in the back with a knife and died from excessive blood loss. That much is already stated in the autopsy report. The court would like to hear more details about the incident itself. Yes, sir. I got ya. Okay, let's take a look at this aerial map of the area here. 
This is a sketch of Dusky Bridge, an old suspension bridge. And the river that runs under there is Eagle River. The victim and the defendant met here, on top of the bridge. After stabbing her in the back, the killer carried the victim back to his car. He was recaptured at a police checkpoint as he was trying to make his getaway, sir. Well, that seems very bad. Hmm, I see. Bridge located 40 feet above Eagle River. Okay. So, Falls was caught. The real question is, how did he get a car? He just escaped prison. Well, escaped, uh, the police wagon. So, initial thing. They met there, which seems very convenient. It's very convenient that the location of the previous crime that these two were both associated with, they went back there at the same time that he escaped apparently close enough to get there within eight hours or so. Hmm. And again, got a car, put him in the trunk. Was the victim's blood found on the bridge? The victim, Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne, was wearing a thick coat, sir. Unfortunately, no traces of blood were found on the bridge. Then how do you know they were there? Hmm. Mr. Edgeworth, I warn you that I absolutely despise conjecture. If there was no blood on the bridge, then you have no proof that they even met there. Your Honor. If you would listen to the testimony we have prepared, I'm sure you'll be convinced. The two of them most certainly did meet on the bridge that day. <laughs> what the f- what is that face? He's shocked. He went bug-eyed. Why, Mr. Edgeworth? I'm not sure I like you, wagging your finger at me as though I was some hoser. Detective, proceed with your testimony. Um, yes, sir. Here we go, Mia. Hang on. Okay, now. Listen carefully, kitten. One little mistake and this guy will drink f you for morning tea. Trust me and get ready. Alright, our first testimony since we, we returned. On the day of the incident, an unknown person phoned the sergeant and asked to meet. Sergeant Hopthorne went to Dusky Bridge at the designated time and met with Mr. Fowles. And that's where she was brutally murdered, sir. The criminal stuffed her body into his car trunk and tried to make a getaway. Mr. Fowles was arrested at a police checkpoint we set up at the base of the mountain. The real question is... Hmm. She was stabbed in the back, right? Yeah, stabbed in the back. If they met at the bridge, how would how would she be stabbed in the back? I guess he could have, like, grappled with her and from... But... I feel like that would, would have been, like, noted. But stabbed in the back feels like she was, like, turned around and walking away and stabbed. And again... So, uh, that's still, in my opinion, a little bit of conjecture. Because... First off, how do they know about the phone call? If Hawthorne told somebody about the phone call, I feel like other people would have been there to see it happen. But well, I'm sure we'll get more information. Hmm. Well, you certainly have established the importance of the bridge. Naturally. Now, would the defense please hurry up and proceed with the cross-examination? Yes, Your Honor. C -c cross-examination. Coming right up! Hey, hey, settle down there, kitten. If you keep trembling like that, you're gonna make me spill my coffee. Uh, I'm not trembling. It's just cold in here. The courtroom can be a cold battlefield, all right. Especially for a beginner. I don't need to, you to worry about me. I mean, I mean the defendant, the witness, everyone's here, a beginner in here. Ha, <laughs> you got me there. But maybe you should keep your claws out and show them what you've got kitten. It's okay, Mia. Stay calm. Just remember those court procedure videos you stayed up all last night watching. This will be interesting. Alright. We shall save, just in case craziness happens. On the day of the incident, an unknown person phoned the sergeant and asked them to meet. I would like to know, how do we know this? This unknown person. You have no idea who it might be, right? Sorry, but I'm afraid I do. Well, if they're an unknown person, how do you know them? 
What? The one who caught Sergeant Harpoon was the defendant, Terry Fowles. What? The defendant? The defendant called her? Wait a minute. Let's see. Because... She... All right, order of events, he had to escape pretty early. I think they said... I forget exactly. I, my brain wants to say that he escaped f for like eight hours. And between his escape and getting recaptured. And also the sergeant was stabbed and bled to death around 4 to 5 p.m. between those two. And again, if she knew that it was Hawthorne, why was nobody with her? Well, let's see. Sergeant Hawthorne was a very thorough person, sir. She left a note about a phone call with Mr. Falls. A note? Yeah, a top secret memo that she left in her desk. Confidential police materials written by the victim. Hmm. According to this note, it seems the one who called her to the bridge was indeed the defendant, Terry Falls. Uh, whose idea was it to keep that note from me? Can I see? I want to look at this again. All right, so five yards. Interesting. Very interesting. And now the victim note. February 14th, uh, 121. Falls, 4.30 p.m. at that bridge. Wear white scarf for identification. Talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time the whole truth must come out. Hmm. This feels like she did have somebody, because this is a note that Hawthorne made. She says, Falls, meet with him at that bridge at 4.30, and wear white scarf for identification, with a note to talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time, the whole truth must come out. Interesting. Ha! <laughs> Looks like the judge is even more sure of his verdict now. Listen up. Never ask a question if you don't already know the answer. It's the de detective's fault. He said... He's the one that said unknown person. Hey, now, don't make that face at me. I just said it was okay the prosecutor told me to. Was that a trap? With that cute face, I didn't expect him to be so sneaky. Hmm. Yeah, because this is mean days. Mean, mean days. Sergeant Hawthorne went to Dusky Bridge at the designated time. MF Falls, let's get more information. A bridge up in the mountains, but why meet there? Because it is a very important place to the defendant, that's why. What do you mean by that? If you remember, five years ago, the defendant kidnapped a young girl. He was chased onto a bridge, and it was there that he killed his hostage. And the place where all this occurred is, of course, Dusky Bridge. The very place where Sergeant Hawthorne arrested and handcuffed Mr. Fowles. Ha! Returning to the scene of the crime, how nostalgic. And that's where she was brutally murdered, sir. Was the body of the victim discovered right away? Yeah, we were really on the ball. We found the criminal within one hour of the murder. So they must have found him, I assume, between 5 and 5.30 then. It was great! We even got to say, don't move! We got you surrounded! Wait a second. Isn't there something weird about that? The location was a suspension bridge up in the mountains. So how did they find out about the crime so quickly? Sergeant Hawthorne must have mentioned the phone call to someone else, right? Ha! Huh. And that's what had happened, and she wouldn't have been killed. She never mentioned the phone call from Mr. Fowles, but she left a note on her desk about it. If only I had noticed it earlier. Maybe she'd still be alive. I wonder why she didn't mention the phone call to anyone. The criminal stuffed the body into his car trunk and tried to make his getaway. I feel like the game is kind of pushing me, because like they mentioned something with this one. It's like, yeah, if she would have told someone, in which the note does say that. So I think the game wants me to present... Hmm, I don't know. Because this is where my anxiety brain starts to activate with this kind of game. Because sometimes... It's like the specific wording is important. Because Mia said that it was weird that she didn't tell anyone. But the note says that she should tell someone. Tell Dahlia. So 
I don't know. I do not know. We'll go through everything else first, and then round back. The criminal stuffed a body into his car trunk and tried to make a getaway. How'd he get a car? Mr. Falls had a car then. Well, that bridge is way up in the mountains, man. The defendant and the victim both went up there by car. I mean, how else, right? But he just escaped prison. What? You mean the defendant drove his own car? No, no, of course not. It was stolen. He stole it from a young couple that had been waiting at a red light. Hmm, car thieves. I'm not sure how I feel about car thieves. Is this guy sure about how he feels about anything? This is a photo of the stolen car's trunk. Naturally, that's how... That's the body of Valerie Hawthorne in there. Whoa, that... That doesn't look too comfortable. This guy, I think, is even more insane than our normal judge. The victim. She was stabbed in the back, correct? Yeah. Huh. For some reason, men always seem to get stabbed in the back. We're talking about a woman here. You can't tell from this photo, but the knife was stuck in her back nice and firm. The condition of the body when it was discovered is very important information. Detective, was there anything strange or noteworthy in the trunk of the car? Here's a photo of the trunk, but I don't see anything strange. Do you? Hmm. I'm going to check. Actually, I do. The trunk, like, lock thing is messed up. Anyway, press. What did the defendant have to say about this photo? What he always says, ma'am. I didn't do it. I didn't do nothing. That's all he says. Nothing? I wouldn't say he did nothing. At the very least, we know he stole a car. It's just what he always says, you are, ma'am. And then he always says... Uh, sorry. I told a little lie. Or something like that. Well, in any case, it seems he was caught and arrested. Precisely. Mr. Fowles was arrested at a police checkpoint we set up at the base of the mountain. That certainly is some impressive police work. <laughs> well, no, actually, it was way too close for comfort. We set up the checkpoint just after 5 p.m. We figured that Mr. Fowles might just try to run. What do you mean it was too close for comfort? The two of them arranged to meet at 4.30, and it takes approximately 30 minutes to go from the bridge to the checkpoint. Hmm, that was kind of close. Any later, Mr. Falls could have slipped right by. Listen up, kitten. There's a big trap waiting for you in that testimony. A, a trap? Walk into it carelessly, and it'll leave more than just a flesh wound. Fun, huh? No, it's not! Well, if you want to have any chance at all, you'd better get some more information. And if you're going to get caught in a trap, it's best to get caught early. You can always look for contradictions afterwards. The ever-famous contradictions. I sure hope I can find some of those. Alright, so we have two things that we kind of have to, like, wonder on. This one, Mia mentioned that there was something weird. Why didn't she tell anyone? Even though the Diddly D does mention it. So it's like, hmm. I wonder, I wonder. And then there was also the bit with the, I don't see anything wrong with it, do you? Even though it's, like, obvious to a degree that the, the lock is kind of busted. So I wonder. Diddly D. Hmm. I'm just wondering because I want to know which one we want to do. We need to be careful. Then again, I think we already fell for the trap, which is like the first one. Because they're like, an unknown person, even though we already know who it is. So it's kind of weird. Hmm. Hmm. Also, this popped up. So I'm just wondering. Hmm. So obviously, this one's like, I don't see anything strange. But at the same time, the broken lock could also just be 
obvious because if he stole the car to break he, to get in, he'd have to break it. Let's look through the evidence. Stabbed with a knife. Yeah, 40 feet above Eagle Ridge. There was the car. Did they ever find her car, I wonder? Victim's note, crime photo. Hmm, victim's note again. Uh, talk to Dahlia. That's the one I'm focusing on the most, but I don't know how to present that specifically to anything. Falls, 430 on that bridge. Wear white scarf. All this is important. So she got the phone call before 121. Made the note at 121. Meet at 430. Let me see. Wear white scarf. That's also important. There's no white scarf there. I do have to thank the game for having the photo be up with the testimony. I probably would have been rummaging around being like, where do I present? What do I present? But it shows the dead body. There's no scarf. The scarf is missing. All right, then. We shall, I believe. I hope that we'll be able to just say, hey. Well, actually, uh, save before that because paranoia. But we're going to present the victim's note and hope the game is like, that photo... No, no scarf. Bobby Bing. Witness! <laughs> Everyone's just waiting. What is it? Do you have something to say, Miss Faye? I'm sorry, I totally forgot what I was going to say. What? But, the victim's note says missing scarf. Well, wear white scarf and the dead body, no scarf. This is, this is the first time I've ever heard to actually address someone like that. Uh, you should have practiced before coming to court. Honestly, Miss Faye, I'm not sure I like this. Huh. Say there, little kitten, want a piece of my coffee candy? Candy? Well, you're still too young to be drinking real coffee. What is coffee in this universe? Alcohol? Uh, come on, Mia, shake it off. You're a lawyer. Detective? Oh, so are we... Was that just to be like, oh, she's not used to this? Granted, yeah, I haven't played a novice in a while, so that was a little weird. I thought I made a mistake and was like, am I going to be punished for this? I thought I had a good thing. Yes, ma'am. This photo. You said that there was nothing peculiar about it. Is that correct? Yeah, that's what I said. Well, then I suggest you take another look at that note written by the victim. The note? It very clearly says, wear white scarf for identification. The caller must have forgotten what the victim looked like, thus, this special request. So that's what it was. I thought she was going to wear the white scarf for identification for herself in relation to Dolly or something. Uh, I, um... I have one very simple question for you, detective. Where is the white scarf? I can't seem to find it in this photo. Um, well, to be honest, we didn't find it in the trunk, man. And you stopped there? You should have looked for it! Ah! The caller told her to wear the identity to identify herself. So I'd expect she did just that. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, what do you have to say about this? Uh, I see the defense is a little lacking. The scarf you are searching so desperately for is this one, perchance? And why was that not put into the evidence, you fiend? But where did you find that, sir? Oh, on Dusky Bridge. I was there first and decided to conduct my own investigation. How did you get there first? When the police had a checkpoint down there and they... Eh. But why? Why didn't you tell me? I made a decision to keep all pieces of evidence in my personal satchel. It's the safest place I know. Huh. That hot shot, sir, has flair. For the dramatic. It's not exactly white, as the caller requested, but as you can see, it's close enough for what it was intended for. Hmm. It looks like it's been some time in the mud. Not surprising, it was drizzling on the mountain that day. Prosecutor Edgeworth, he was intentionally hiding that scarf the whole time. The court will accept the scarf into evidence. Worn by the victim at the time of the incident found on Dusky Bridge. They even intentionally said that it doesn't look white. Kind of does, but it's more blue. And they say that's mud, but I'm going to presume that's blood. 
Now, if the attorney for the defense has finished embarrassing herself, I'd like to move on with the testimony. That is all right with you, isn't it, Miss Faye? Boy, would I like to wrap this scarf around his smarmy little neck. Very good. Now, if we're done with this mud-covered scarf business, the prosecution moves to establish conclusively and with hard evidence that Miss Hawthorne and Mr. Fowles did indeed meet on the bridge that day. Further, we will show exactly what occurred there. That sounds quite promising. I can't wait to hear all about it. Uh, everything is moving at his whim. Don't forget, kitten. There's a reason why everyone considers this kid a genius. A genius, huh? Well, like an ass. Actually, there's an eyewitness who was there when the incident took place. That would have been nice to know. This photo was accidentally taken by the witness. It shows that Vic wearing this scarf, sir. Well, it shows her wearing a scarf. It was drizzling that day, unfortunately. It's a little hard to see what's going on. Anyway, the criminal shoved the victim down from behind and stabbed her in the back. That must have been when the scarf fell off. Well, I think I already know where I need to present. The photo clearly shows that they weren't... That he couldn't have shoved her to the ground and stabbed her in the back. Hmm, looking at this photo. You really get the sense that this bridge is very high up. It is about a 40-foot drop from the bridge to Eagle River down below. Mr. Edgeworth, who took this photo anyway? Let's just say that it was a well-intentioned third party. Aha! Potential witness! So why is it this person in the courtroom? Well, they said they absolutely did not want to testify. The person in question is very delicate, Your Honor. Besides, as long as we have this photo, we see no reason to compel them to testify. I'm not sure I feel about that. All right, then. As you can see, Terry Files had both the motive and the opportunity. I think it's quite clear this point of what happened on that bridge. Hmm. Aha! The truth is becoming clear to me now! Huh? He's gonna say, yes, it's quite obvious he's clearly guilty. Not again. That's not fair. I haven't even done my cross-examination yet. Hmm. What do you mean, hmm? This judge is weird, but kind of funny in his own way. I do like that they're trying to separate him from our normal judge. I do enjoy that. All right. Actually, there was an eyewitness who was there when the incident took place. I feel like that's not important to press on. We'll come back around if we need to. This photo was accidentally taken by the witness. It shows the Vic wearing the scarf, sir. The victim is wearing a scarf in the photo, all right. So about the witness who took this photo, what was this person doing all the way in the mountains? She was taking photos of wild flowers, apparently. There are many unusual types of flora on that mountain, Miss Fay. People in the area say it's because of the spirits that live there. Spirits! Now that you mention it, this is photo. This cloudy fog-like thing. Is it a ghost? I don't believe it! No, yeah, no, no, I don't think it's a ghost. It was twizzling that day, unfortunately, but it's a little hard to see what's going on. Well, let's press on it, maybe we get more information. Drizzling, huh? That's right. There was a light rain coming down. The whole place was dreary. But not as dreary as the mood that's in this courtroom right now. <laughs> Looks like a cold front just moved in. In any case... The point is that the area is quite damp. No, well, that's not, that's not uh, gumshoe at all. The point is, the area was quite damp. There was even some fog. I even slipped and fell while I was on the bridge. It was really something. Anyway, the criminal shoved the victim down from behind and stabbed her in the back. Is that part of the witness's testimony as well? Of course it is. He pushed the victim hard in the back and she fell down right on his stomach. Hmm. I remember that happening once myself. It was really brutal. Are you talking about seeing someone get pushed, or were you on the one the one getting pushed? Or does it mean that you pushed someone down like that once? With his mind-boggling tales and the way he talks brutal, I wonder if he's Canadian. Huh. Save your nasty look for the right person. Huh? Take a look. Poor baby. The court record seems to have a wet itself. Hey, watch where you spill your coffee! The court record, huh? I think that's the hint to... It would be nice to know exactly where the scarf was found. Well, let's press that, and then I think I know what to present. 
So in other words, there was a struggle between the criminal and the victim. That's what the witness said. Well, it looks like she didn't remember about the scarf. But from what she said, it sounded like a pretty violent fight, man. The area was wet from rain, the bridge was probably wet too. Which would explain why the scarf was covered in mud, but... There's something about this testimony that's still bothering me. <laughs> Talk about a surprise. I had no idea there was a photo. So what do I do? You really still believe him? Mr. Crybaby, I mean. Of course I do! <laughs> so the little cat... I moved my mic and then it flipped. Huh. <laughs> so the little kitten believes in fairy tales, huh? In that case, the answer is obvious. If what you believe is true, then that means that somewhere, hidden in the testimony, is a contradiction. One huge contradiction waiting to be discovered. And that's your chance. So, I'm going to say... Anyway, that's where you shoved her from behind and stabbed her in the back. My theory... I'll still, like, go through, maybe, a bit, because the scarf could also be important evidence that I need to present at some point. But I'm going to assume that we can say, like, ba ba ba. Hmm. I don't know. Because my initial thought is... Maybe we present the photo, the witness photo, to say that it's impossible for her to have uh, been, like, pushed down and stabbed in her back when they were facing each other. That's my thought, but I don't know. Hmm. I'm just wondering. But... Another thing, because, to be fair, that's my thought process. And I need to look at things more all around. Because when I pressed on this, Mia said something along the lines of... The scarf, I think. I need to might need to look at it again. But this one, I think, is the important one. Because it's the most thing. Let's look at it all. Actually, there was a witness who was there, but we already established that she is fragile and doesn't want to testify. This photo, accidentally taken, she was up there for Wild Flora. Drizzling that day, hard to sleep, you can slip. Anyway, the criminal shoved the victim down from behind. That's the part that I think is the most important. The scarf must have fell off. I think there's nothing that I can really present there. I think this is the important one. But let's look at all the evidence. Autopsy report, not important. I don't think. The bridge, I don't think... That would be important to this one. Hmm. The victim's note? Don't think so. Because it's something about the victim falling down, I believe. Because, again, it could be the witness's photo, but at the same time, I think that that would be... Initially, I thought it was because they're facing each other, but at the same time, you could easily argue that during the scuffle... She, like, turned, slipped onto her stomach, and he stabbed her. My question is then, how would he get, like, a... Why wouldn't he bash her head in with the, like, jailer boulder that he has locked to his leg? But... Let's see. Let's look at this crime photo again. Because surely this is also going to be multiply important, because... Then again, who knows? Maybe they're like, we're going to make a single illustration for one bit. But I don't know. So it has to be one of the photos, I think. Because autopsy not important right now for any of this. I am fairly certain I need to press on the criminal shove the victim down from behind. But that's the thing. The criminal shoved the victim down from behind. I don't think I believe that. Which makes me lead to that. But we just also got the scarf, so I don't know. The witness photo might just be to box us in that we might then return to. Hmm. But at the same time, the scarf. He says the scarf fell. And if that's not blood, because again, earlier on they said that she wore a thick coat, so it was absorbed it absorbed the blood. Hmm. And the scarf, they clearly say that's mud. I that and looking at it, maybe it is mud and not blood. 
Hmm. But if she was pushed down... And I believe that Edgeworth said that he found the scarf on the bridge. And plus, through his testimony, he says... Gumshoe says... From this picture... The defendant pushed the victim down and stabbed her in the back on the bridge. And if the scarf came off then, like Gumshoe is positing towards us, I'm going to say that we need to present this and say, why isn't her coat also dirty? Maybe? Because the more I think about it, the more I think this is just my logic, and it could be twisted wrong. Like... But I think it's more, like, safe to try and go for the crime photo. Because she's pristine. There is no mud on her anywhere. And if she fell on her stomach, she would, like, get dirty. Like this scarf is. yabba dabba doo So at the time of the crime, there was a light drizzle coming down, correct? Yeah, and fog too. Just a generally soggy atmosphere. Pet my bangs. Well, I have evidence that doesn't go with the soggy atmosphere. But this is a photo of the victim's body that was found in the car trunk. Considering the conditions at the scene of the crime, something isn't right. Hmm. Well, by all means, please enlighten us as to what isn't right. What is it about this photo in the trunk that doesn't fit with the conditions of the day? I'm going to press here and hope it goes. Naturally, the answer is right here. The victim's... Uh, the victim's coat? As far as I can see, there is nothing strange about it. That's exactly what's strange. Recall the testimony. What were the conditions on the bridge that day? It was drizzling and foggy. Dus dusky bridge was all wet. If the victim really had fallen down on her stomach on top of the bridge, then the front of her coat would be covered in mud. Ugh! That... That's exactly right. The other day, I fell on a muddy street, but my gorgeous playoff beard was for befouled. I do admit that the crime scene was quite wet that day. However, that doesn't mean the top of the bridge itself was muddy. If your honor had fallen in the shower instead of a muddy street, your glorious hockey beard, pride of the legal league, would be wet but not muddied. Fortunately, I have yet to test that. Still, your point is well taken. Can you prove that the surface of the bridge was muddy that day? The surface of the bridge, huh? Ha! Huh. A real man wouldn't stand for a taunt like this. I want to quickly check. It's hard to tell. But that bridge does seem pretty dirty. With, like, the poles and the rope. It's hard to see, like, the actual wooden floorboards. But hey, if the scarf got dirty... Neither would a real woman... Of course I can! Here's the evidence that proves the surface of the bridge was muddy! SCARF! The evidence is... This scarf! Ugh! It should be obvious. If the scarf fell onto the bridge and got this muddy, it means the bridge is co obviously covered in mud. Ugh! No, I can't be outwitted by this novice bimbo! Hey, seem to you, buddy. I do like the bug-eyed look that he got there. Miss Faye's assertion makes perfect sense to me. I do admit that there appears to be a contradiction between the condition of the victim's coat and her scarf. However, the real question is, why is there a contradiction? Huh? For every contradiction, there exists an explanation. Let's look at what the explanation in this case may be, shall we? All right. It's not like he's really giving me a choice here. Ha! Huh. You're doing pretty well for a little kitten. Mr. Armando! No matter what he says, a contradiction always comes down to a lie. It's either the victim discovered in the trunk, the witness's photo showing the defendant in the victim, or the witness's testimony that stated she saw the moment of the murder. Just relax and think it over. It's pretty simple, isn't it? The false evidence, it's one of those three. I wonder what it could be. 
<clears throat> what you said just now, I'm not sure I like that. But that wasn't me, Your Honor. It was the coffee aficionado over there that said it. This court is not in the habit of accepting false evidence, you know. Blame it on him, Your Honor. He was the one trying to slip false evidence into court. But we won't let him. We'll expose his evidence as the flimsy scam it really is. Yes! The false evidence in this case is the... Oh boy, I don't know what to think. Hmm. Because the scarf got muddy. And the person in the photo is wearing a scarf. The victim's note says, come get scarf. The real question is, hmm. Because she was told to wear the white scarf by Falls. Hmm. I don't know. Let's look at the options. Witness photo, body in the trunk, or witness's testimony. Obviously, it's not the body in the trunk. Because... My brain went to overthinking mode there for a moment because it's possible that she died beforehand. If you think about it, if you think about it, she died between four and five. She died between those two times. It takes 30 minutes to get up there by car. It is entirely possible, maybe, uh, but that would overcomplicate things because, again, she died between four and five. My thought process is maybe, but even then, that would con the body in the trunk would still contradict. Uh, could it be the witness's testimony? Because the witness's photo, it exists. They met. Uh, it's probably not fake. The body in the trunk, we have a photo of it. Would it be the... It has to be the witness's testimony, right? That's the only thing that isn't lining up. Because we know that Fall and somebody in a coat and scarf met. Then somehow, if it is Hawthorne that was in the photo, she then was stuffed in the trunk, dead with a knife in the back, but missing her scarf. So it has to be the witness's testimony. It is a no-brainer. Obviously, it's the witness that's suspicious. During his earlier testimony, the detective pointed out a crucial fact. The criminal shoved the victim down from behind and stabbed her in the back. Now, is that testimony exactly what the witness claims to have seen? Yeah, that's what the witness told us. <laughs> Flip my bangs. That testimony is filled with holes. After all, the victim's coat isn't dirty at all. Hmm, that's true. Huh, it's not just true, it's the truth. If there was a truly decisive evidence or decisive witness in this case, I'm certain that boy wonder over there would have called them in the first place. Your Honor, the defense requests to cross-examine the eyewitness. The testimony presented so far is not only vague, but contradictory as well. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, it appears that we'll need to hear from your mystery witness, after all. And personally, little weird that the identity of the witness was also kept from us. Granted, this is Kangaroo Court, the universe, but I feel like they would have presented eyewitness da-da-da, who is da-da-da, and there, because of da-da-da, saw this happen. Like, but obviously something funky is going on. Ah, <sighs> you should brace yourself. For the brutal truth. Your Honor, the prosecution has no intention of hiding the witness from the court. We are prepared to present our witness at any time. Very well. Please bring forth your witness at this time. What Mr. Edgeworth said kind of worries me. What does he mean by the brutal truth? I don't know. I feel like Edgeworth wouldn't have cared and he would have brought forth the witness if they were that important. Now let's proceed with the testimony. Mr. Edgeworth, please go right ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. The prosecution summons the woman who saw the events that day with her very own eyes. This is it, Mia. The battle begins here. 
Witness, what is your name and occupation? You! That! You! I remember you! You're the villain! Of the first case! This is weird, this is weird. What, 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 what? She went to jail. Like, why wouldn't Mia... Wait, 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 wait. Go back. B brain blast back. Because, like, she she was the guilty party of the first case of this game. She was the tutorial villain. And with the poison necklace. Because, wait a minute. Wait, 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 okay, okay, this is that case. This, this is that case. In the first case, it was mentioned that she was here, the evil lady. Evil lady was here at the courtroom, at the courthouse, and that's where she met Phoenix. But she was trying to hide the evidence to her crime. Right? Poison. Right? Right? Or was that something else? Because the timeline is, she is here for some reason. She is here for some reason, and she meets Phoenix. So she, she gives her necklace, which has poison in it, or at least trace amounts of poison, to Phoenix. And... Phoenix then thinks that they're dating, and she puts on this facade of, oh, I'm a very polite individual, and she pretends to date Phoenix for months to try and get that necklace back. And I, and I think it very much is referenced, I think, that, yeah, she was here at the courthouse for a reason. And this lines up because that they also said that Mia didn't do any other cases between like her previous case and then the case with Phoenix. So is that, but, but the one thing doesn't make sense. One thing doesn't make sense is that I swear Mia would have recognized her, right? Mia would have pointed out that she had met criminal girl before in the courthouse, right? Unless I am... Because I'm 90% certain that Mia didn't say, hey, I remember you from this case. Okay, okay, it's all coming together. It's all coming together. Let's go, 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 I guess. Everyone's so silent that I can hear their hearts going pitter-patter. Hmm. Oh. When I look at you, how can I put it... You look as scrumptious as double du uh, as a double double in a dozen donut holes. I feel like I want to hurry her up and hand down a verdict just to have a bite. Hey, not so fast! Huh. As I said before, this witness is very sensitive and delicate. I would ask the court to please exercise care when addressing her. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. You are a true gentleman. Miss Faye, you could learn a lot from this man. If he's such a gentleman, he sure doesn't act like one to me. Um, sir? Hmm? Eh? Yes, my dear? This is my first time, so I'm sure I'll make a lot of mistakes. Anyway, I just wanted to say I'm sorry for all the trouble I might cause. Hmm, not at all. It's no trouble at all. Now then, may we please have your name and occupation? My name is, um, Melissa Foster. I'm a college student, a freshman in the literature department. You were on the scene when the unfortunate event occurred, correct? And you were the one who took this photo. Is that accurate? Ah! How c can you be so mean? Now see here, what are you doing shoving that in her face like that? Huh? But, but it's just a photograph. It's not like it's something dangerous. Next time I'll be forced to penalize you. Uh-oh, I don't like the turn this has taken. Let me guess, this is a uh, in-universe warning that if I present faulty... Well, I guess if I press wrong, will we get nuked? Well, we'll have to be extra careful then. Is she staring at me? Um, and you would be? Huh? I'm the defense attorney. My name is Mia Faye. I see. 
So you are... Now then, young lady, could you please give us your testimony? What does she mean, you are? She recognizes us? Is she from the future? Yes, your honor. I'll do my best. The devil lady is here. The devil is here, ladies and gentlemen. We need to be careful, I presume. I, I was using my camera to take some pictures of wild flowers. And then I noticed there were two people standing up on the suspension bridge. I want to I want to analyze something. So the picture is being taken from a cliffside with the cliff to the left. I wonder what the orientation of them are. So I believe that obviously that cliff face is there, so I presume that the picture would be taken from the bottom left of this diagram. Because there is the cliff face, that I presume. Or maybe it could have been taken, like, the middle right, because there is a bit of cliffiness, but also, like, presumed you could be down there and it is kind of an upward angle, but... Interesting. Suddenly, they just started fighting! That's when I hurried and took the photo that shows the crucial moment. And right after that, I called the police. It doesn't show the crucial moment, though. Hmm. By the way, where were you standing when you, the incident occurred? I believe the map would be of help here. Yes, give us the, the, the angle. Um, I was standing right over here. So, so Hawthorne was on the broken side of the bridge. I was standing in a beautiful field surrounded by tall cliffs. So you took the photo from that location, eh? I brought the camera I was using at the time, just like Mr. Edgeworth asked me to. Oh, what a cute camera. Just like its owner. Melissa Foster took the witness's photo with this, a small but powerful model. All right then, Miss Fay, time for your cross-examination. But I warn you, make the witness cry again and you'll feel the wrath of my gavel. Jerk. So I need to be careful of wince I do uh, press. Okay, the one thing that I feel is important, because let's see, yeah, I feel like that's irrelevant. Then I noticed there were two people standing up on the suspension bridge. I feel like that could be irrelevant. Suddenly they just started fighting. Might be important, maybe irrelevant. That's when I hurried and took the photo. That shows a crucial moment. I feel like showing the, like, uh, photo of them standing there. And then after that, I called the police. Hmm... That could also be important, but I don't know. So, yeah. I believe that this one's pretty cut and dry. Because that's irrelevant. Notice there were two people standing up on the suspension bridge. That's not contradictory, and there's nothing to be gained from pressing, I don't believe. Suddenly, they just started fighting... Maybe pressing would be good, but we need to be careful because if you make a so ba 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 ba. That's when I hurried and took the photo that shows the crucial moment. But this is not the crucial moment. Hmm. And again, it shows sh uh, falls coming in from the from the car side. And boxing in Hawthorne on the broken side, I presume. And that's not the crucial moment. Once again, save, just in case. And, yeah, I think that that's why I heard and took the photo. I believe Witness's photo is the one that we have. Witness, when you said you took a photo of the crucial moment, is this what you mean? Uh, all I can see in this photo are two people facing each other. You testified that you saw the two of them starting to fight. Normally that's the kind of thing we would refer to as a crucial moment. Why haven't you presented a photo like that? B -b well you see... The photo he presented was the only one there was. But if you really wanted to capture the crucial moment, then what happened next? You must have taken a photo of it! Hmm... Hmm... Oh! 
He became Simpson. Uh, um, my apologies, young lady. But Miss Faye's assertion is not without a certain amount of merit. He can certainly downplay a situation, can he? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm a very bad girl. I, um, I used it all up. The film, I mean. You ran out of film? Uh, this photo was the last one. What? Then you don't have any evidence. Meh. Unfortunately, that is the truth. I personally examined all of the photographs she took that day. All the other photos are of the witness herself playing among the wildflowers. I feel like that has to be set up. She's, she's evil. So it can't possibly be. Meh. Da, 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 da. Meh. She's evil. Evil! The witness herself? Then who took the photos? Well, you see, my camera has a timer feature built into it. So you took photos of yourself? Hmm, I remember taking some photos of myself once too. Please, no details. It seems that Miss Faye's assertion was not so decisive after all. Wait, just a minute. Well, if she had no film left, she couldn't very well take more pictures, eh? Miss Foster, perhaps then you could tell us about a different sort of photo. Photos of the incident that you took with your very own eyes. Mr. Edgeworth, you're quite the poet. Very well then, let's get back to the cross-examination. Let's hear your thoughts on the fight that you witnessed. Yes, Mr. Judge. Boy, this guy's really sucker for sweet talk. I personally would have kept on pressing and saying, no, no, no. She said she took a photo of the decisive moment, as if it was a fact, as if it existed. She should have said, if she was telling the truth, oh, I tried to take a p photo of the crucial moment, but I had ran out of photos. But at the same time, wouldn't her testimony include her saying... I thought it was weird, so I started taking photos of the people on the... I took a photo of the people on the bridge, because I figured, ooh, that's kind of aesthetic. And then they started fighting, and then at the crucial moment, tried to take a picture and ran out of film. I just, I feel... I feel... That it would be D. Bibbidi bibbidi. I hate it. Hate this evil monster. Ha! Huh. It looks like the other kitten in the room is one that's getting all the attention. Yeah, it's sickening. <laughs> I like that he's just here. He's, he's kind of helping, but kind of not. He amuses me. I, I was using my camera to take some pictures of wildflowers. Then I noticed there were two people standing up on the suspension bridge. Suddenly they started fighting. The victim turned around and tried to run away, but she only got about ten yards before she was stabbed in the back. If Terry Falls isn't the criminal, then there must be something strange in that girl's testimony. Be careful, kitten. That girl has the judge wrapped around her little finger. You're going to have to tough time poking holes in that testimony of hers. You're going to have to come up with something really good, Mia. She mentioned specific distance. She only got about 10 yards before she was stabbed in the back. I think this actually had diddly D. She only got about 10 yards. Da -da. Then she would have been off the bridge, wouldn't she? She would have been off the bridge, right? I th Do I press? That's the thing. I don't know if I should press or not. Hmm. I don't know if I should press on that or just present the bridge thing. Because I feel like that's weird. I feel like that's weird. Because, like... Oh, wait! That's... She's on the broken side! How could she run 10 meters? Even if... Because if we go past, like, the cliff face, because the picture shows a bit of the cliff face, they're, like, in the middle-ish of the bridge. She would not have been able to go across 10 meters. Or 10 yards or whatever. So, yeah, th th I'm going to save so we don't have to go through the presenting of diddly D if something bad happens. But she tried to run. I feel like this is the right answer. I feel like this is the right answer because she specifies yards. The photo specifies yards. This shows her on the wrong side. Then, yeah. Witness, your testimony is a joke. Huh? B what? 
but, but I, I just... Hey, Miss Faye, I thought I warned you not to make the witness cry. One short testimony and two bad contradictions. There's no possible excuse. You say there were two contradictions? It's simple. Take a look at the diagram of the area. According to her testimony, the two of them were in the middle of the bridge. But if they were, and the victim had turned around and tried to run, well then... She, she would have hit a dead end! You said ten yards, but she couldn't have run even five! Because Dusky Bridge has collapsed on that side! Ah! What does all this mean? It's very simple, Your Honor. This charming little witness told a charming little lie. That's all there is to it. This beautiful young lady has been lying to the court? Just a moment, Your Honor. Mr. Edgeworth. Come to bail out a liar, of you? Your Honor, allow me to personally apologize for the confusion. What do you mean? There's one major mistake in this diagram. What did you say? What are you referring to? It's all because this diagram was made after the incident occurred. It's a very old bridge. We couldn't find any official blueprints of it. So you're saying? I'm saying that even though this bridge is currently in disrepair, there's no evidence that can prove the bridge was broken before the incident. That is flimsier than the bridge. I'm sorry. No, that's dumb. I hate you, Edgeworth, with your stupid little gaslighting bullshit. No, that's dumb. I hate that. <laughs> in universe and out. That's stupid. It's like, oh, oh, we can we don't know if it was like that before. What do you mean? What do you mean? You go to the scene of the crime. Is it broken now? If it wasn't broken, like because if it wasn't broken then, then that means that it got broken during the scuffle or after the scuffle. Which either... And even then... Are we just forgetting the fact that the body is still not dirty from mud like the scarf? I feel like, I feel like we're all being taken for a ride. Th that's ridiculous! You can actually tell the condition of the bridge on this photo. I apologize to the court for not being more clear when I presented the evidence. Hmm. Hmm. That's dumb. I hate you. Ha! That guy is good. Huh? What do you mean? He planned it from the beginning. He's a genius, all right. That diagram of the bridge was his insurance policy. What? That coward? Well, Miss Fay, it seems you've once again made a reckless accusation. I'm so sorry. I should have been more careful myself. No, 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 no. It wasn't your fault at all. Now then, shall we go on with the trial? I'd like to establish once and for all what it was that the witness actually saw. Indeed. All right, young lady. May I ask you to please proceed with your testimony? But I... it's so hard to go on. We're all on your side, Miss Foster. There's no need to worry. Just tell us what you saw. Yes, sir. Hmm, I, I hate that. I hate that excuse. After he stabbed her in the back, he quickly picked her up in his arms. Did we not just establish that if she was face down on the bridge and it was dirty enough to dirty the scarf that her coat also would be dirty? He quickly picked her up in his arms and he carried her over to the car. You wouldn't have been able to see that. I suppose that was the only way he could make sure the bl body stayed hidden. He couldn't just leave the body on top of the bridge. He could have thrown it into the river! Again, coat not dirty. It fell on bridge. It should be like scarf. You could not have seen car because you were behind cliff. He could have thrown the body into the river. He could have thrown the body into the river. Just to be careful. He could have thrown the body into the river. He could have thrown her over those railings. I hate you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm only supposed to talk about what I saw. Hmm... Witnessing such violence must have been difficult. Yes, sir. I'm still shaken up. If he accepts this testimony as it is, we're finished. Don't say that. Oh, well, maybe I'll stop off at my favorite cafe on the way home. 
They make a really great mocha, mocha latte. This trial isn't over yet. Ha! <laughs> That's what I like to hear. All right, Miss Faye, your cross-examination, if you please. The contradiction is staring you right in the face. Multiple for me. Go on and attack. Yeah, because again, could have thrown body into river. Could have... You couldn't have seen. Why is it not dirty? I don't even know which one. I don't even know what to press because he'd still be like, Oh, don't make her cry. I don't know. I hate. I'm full of hate. I'm full of, I'm full of hate. Let's see. After he stabbed her, picked her up in his arms, I don't feel like that's irrelevant. Like, or like, there's no contradiction there that we can contradict with evidence. Then he carried her over to the car. I think maybe, but at the same time, I don't know. Because we, maybe. I suppose that the only way he could make sure the body stayed hidden. Again, uh, throw her into the river. I think that's the most important one. Uh, especially because they accused him of doing that before. They said, oh, he murdered a 14-year-old for throwing her into the river on that same bridge. But he didn't do it this time. After stabbing her, he doesn't even need to stab her. Just throw her into the river. Ah! Hate. Full of hate. He couldn't just leave the body on top of the bridge. River! Oh, I'm sorry. I'm supposed to be in when I was there. I just, I, I don't know. Again, I don't. Meh. 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 Ba, ba, ba. I feel like that's uh, considering that. Like, I feel like this one could be important. The then he carried her over to the car. How did you know there was a car? You were behind a cliff. But I feel like this is the most important one. I suppose that was the only way he could make sure the body stayed hidden. River. I feel like, well, first things first, save so that we save our progress in case we catastrophically die. And I, 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 because again, river, 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 river that makes bodies disappear forever. I'm going to present Yata. A killer not wanting his victim to be found, I can understand that. However, the idea of moving the body for that purpose is clearly odd. There was a much easier way to make sure for the body wasn't found. Well, what is it? Take another look at the map of the area and you'll see how. There's a river right below the bridge. Earlier, Mr. Edgeworth pointed out something interesting about the river. For those who are not aware, Eagle River is well known for its powerful current. Most bodies that fall in are never recovered. Ah! In the kidnapping case five years ago, the victim's body was carried away and never found. Why would she react that way? I guess because I'm pointing out that the, the hiding body in trunk is stupid. And again, how do you know about the guy? You couldn't have seen the guy, you stupid memo. If ten murders were to occur at that same spot above the Eagle River, you can bet your boots that every other killer would have tossed the body in the water. Order! 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 I'm not sure if I care for the way you put that, Miss Faye, but I must admit it does seem odd not to have thrown the body into the river. Ooh. Well, Mr. Edgeworth. <sighs> How sad. Perhaps Miss Faye would do well to try taking a dip in the river herself. After all, you claim to be such an expert in the ways of nature. What are you talking about? My point is that no matter how odd you may find the killer's method of body disposal, the fact is that this is what the killer did. None of your arguments have anything to do with that what the witness saw. Hmm, quite true. I don't think that's true at all. Miss Faye, it seems that your assertion is without merit after all. He threw the other w the girl's body into the river last time. I very much, considering that he's saying that he didn't kill her, and he was convicted on doing the same thing, why wouldn't he do it again? But what the witness claims to have seen is totally ridiculous! Surely you can't deny that the body was found in the trunk of the car. That's certainly consistent with what the witness has told us. Ah, uh, please witness, go on with your testimony. I'll try. All you have to do is tell us only what you saw. Otherwise, the mean lady might yell at you again. Who is he talking about? All right, I'll do my best. I am being annoyed. I'm getting annoyed by this courtroom. I get that, like what they're going for and stuff, but it's just like it's so obvious. It is also obvious. Maybe now we'll be able to point out, hey, you couldn't see the car. How do you know he's taking it to a car? Sure, hindsight, but still. But bleh. 
I, just, I need to, I need to recoup. Drink my tea. Oh, oh, aggravation. Oh. It's just, it's so weird that that would just be thrown out. I hate it. Okay. Bothersome. That is so bothersome. Because we still... The coat is still clean! Coat is still clean. Coat is still clean. After he stabbed her in the back, he quickly picked her up, then he carried her up to the car. The killer broke into the trunk of the stolen car and hid the body in there. He couldn't just leave the body on top of the bridge. I'm sorry, I'm supposed to... So, obviously, the killer broke into the trunk of the stolen car and hid the body in there. Maybe I need to present something else? Yeah, is this... Aha! 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 Edgeworth specifically said only to say what she saw. Only to say what she saw. Cliff. Couldn't see. I'm going to presume this is what we actually need to present now. Because... This is her specifically saying she saw him. Putting the body... He Specifically, breaking the trunk and putting the body in there. <laughs> well, Miss Foster, it looks like you've done this... Uh, done it this time. D done what? Made a crucial mistake. A crucial mistake? Like what, Miss Faye? The killer broke into the trunk of the stolen car and hid the body in there. You're saying you saw that, right? With your own eyes? Yes, and? It's simple, Miss Foster. Take a look at the diagram. Look at this photograph! The place you claim to have taken the photo from that day is here. Do you see what I mean? Even if you try to see the car, this outcropping of rock is directly in the way. Uh, that's right, Miss Foster. From where you were standing, you could not have possibly seen the killer's car! Uh, I admit that the diagram shows a large outcropping of rock. However, it isn't so tall that it would stop her from seeing the car. That's right. It's not high at all. Bish! You're obviously lower than the bridge by just a bit, and that rock cropping is as tall as you are. I was able to see his car just fine. I'm so sorry, but that just doesn't wash. I believe it was the witness who presented this as evidence to the court, yes? This is the location that the photo was taken from. Your very own te photo tells the whole story. You can clearly see the left side of the bridge, but the outcropping that is being referred to is really more like a cliff. Ah! Your view should have been completely cut off by the cliff, but still you claim to have been able to see the killer's car. No! Let this stick, please. I'm getting aggravated by Edgeworth's bullshit. Then again, what am I expecting? Obviously, she doesn't go to jail and, like... Again, it, this is referred to, I think, as uh, Mia's failure as a case, so... And Edgeworth hasn't lost a case the entire time, so hey, buddy, de buddy, ha, buddy, ha. We have to accept failure up here. Ah! Order! Order in the court! What is the meaning of all this ballyhoo? Your Honor, don't jump to any hasty conclusions. The fact that the escapee fled in a stone car was reported on the news. After the witness seen a murder, I'm sure you can appreciate that the witness was very upset. She must have heard about the stolen car and convinced herself that she saw it. Fucking bullshit, you said say only what you saw. But she was repeatedly warned before starting her testimony. She was told to testify only about what she saw with her own eyes. Mm. Oh. Uh, Mr. Judge? What is it? I think, I think I must have remembered things wrong. Hey, wait a minute! You can't just say that! Miss Faye, no one on the face of the planet is perfect. Hmm, yes, indeed. Quite true, you know what they say. 
to err is human, to forgive, divine. I'm inclined to give the benefit of the doubt to our witness here. What? That's not fair! Ha! <laughs> Save the tears for later, kitten. But Mr. Armando! Don't look back until the trial is over. Now is the time to go forward. But... but that wasn't fair! Okay, kitten, you need to relax. Then you need to remember. The other kitten's testimony. The killer broke into the trunk of the stolen car and hid the body there. So tell me, how did she know that? How did she know that he broke into the trunk? Aha! Well, Miss Foster, until you can explain how you knew that, you're going to have a lot of very suspicious people on this side of the courtroom. Well, witness? Well, I'm certain that he broke into the trunk because because there were marks left on the trunk lid. And how did you say that? How did you know? I'm going to lose my mind. I'm certain there were scratch marks from when he broke into it. What? Let me see that photo. It's true. These certainly look like scratch marks around the keyhole. Hmm. It's obvious that this trunk has been broken open. Well, Miss Faye, are you satisfied? The judge is on her side. I can't make any mistakes here. What she just said. Is there a contradiction in there somewhere? Because she couldn't see it. And even if, even if, it was reported that the car was stolen, and even if she put together as an innocent person, how did she know about the broken lock? That's the thing. Yeah, because she wouldn't be able to know about the scratches, specifically. She was way too specific. She said, oh, there's scratches on the keyhole. Does it work? Does it work? Melissa Foster, it looks like you finally betrayed yourself. What? You said you were in a field taking photos of wildflowers, but even so, you knew about the scratches. The question is when? When did you get a chance to see those scratches? Finally. I finally got her. Edgeworth coming in for the save. Ha. <laughs> I'm getting pretty tired of waiting over here. Then perhaps it would be faster if Miss Faye explained herself. Your Honor, there's only one possible explanation. The reason the witness had seen the scratches was... She happened to be passing by, but then she wouldn't be there. And it's just that... Is she the owner of the car? That would be kind of weird. But she took the photo... Hmm... Hmm. Hmm. Because she happened to be passing by. That's obviously wrong. It would have been told to us if she is the owner of the car. And this is the only one that's incriminating and pushing things forward. She put the corpse in the car herself. There's only one way that the witness had the chance to see those scratches. But yes. Also, if she was the owner of the car, she still wouldn't have seen the scratches. And if she And she couldn't have been the owner of the car because she was in the mountain... Presumably around the time that the car was stolen because he was only out for eight hours She would have had to get up there and she probably would have been more worried. Oh, no, my car was stolen What is it? Naturally when she opened the trunk and stuffed the corpse in herself The person who really hid the body of the trunk In the trunk was Melissa Foster. It was you that did it wasn't it? That's ridiculous. I could never it was the man in the pr prison garb. He's the one I don't think so, Mrs. Foster. If Mr. Falls had been the one to put the corpse in the trunk, he would have simply used the car key. There was no need to break it open. I didn't think of that. He did steal the car while it was in use. But he stole the car. He stole it from a young couple that had been waiting at a red light, which means that the key would have still been in the ignition. Oh, I, I see. That is a good point. If he had access to the trunk, he wouldn't have broken it open. Thank you for telling us about the scratches, Miss Foster. Without that, we never would have uncovered the truth. That it couldn't have been Mr. Falls that put the body in the trunk. No! 
p preposterous to even suggest that the witness put the body in there. If that were true, then how do you explain the photo that she took? The corpse could only have been put in the trunk when the incident occurred. And we already know that at the time, she was taking photographs. It's because Falls left afterwards. Now's your chance, Mia. Finish this thing. On the contrary, I'm not so certain about that anymore, Mr. Edgeworth. There's no need to think too deeply about it. What I'm saying is that the shutter for the camera may not have been pushed. The timer. Timer. Let's take another look at this camera and see what features it has, shall we? It has a timer built into it, even a mini tripod. Hmm. Why, it's almost as if she had brought this camera just to take this picture. What are you trying to say then, Miss Faye? That when the crime occurred, Miss Foster wasn't in the field as she claimed? Well, if she really did use the camera's auto timer, then the answer is yes, she was somewhere else. Exactly. She was not in the field. Hmm. Would the defense please explain further? Listen, this is a crucial point. Where was Miss Foster when the incident occurred? In answering that question, we'll also make clear Miss Foster's true identity. Well then, please answer this question. Where was Melissa Foster when the incident on the bridge occurred? Hmm, I don't know. That's one thing I don't know. Because I assume they're asking where was she when the photo was taken. But... Could it be? Ba 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 Because... Because... Somebody called... Because it's all very funky and it's... It's all very funky. But my initial thought is she pretended to be... Hawthorne. But then why? Why would she be there? Hmm. But obviously she's not over here. This is broken, and I still hold that it was broken on the day of, so she couldn't be over here. Uh, so she still has to be relevant to Falls. So the only place that makes sense is for her to be where the victim was, for it to not have been Hawthorne. Because Hawthorne was killed between 4 and 5. The meeting was at 4.30. But the question is, how could... I want to take a look. I can't take a look at the photo. Damn it. Huh. It's very odd. It's very odd. It's very odd. It's very odd. But yeah, the only place that makes sense... Uh, if she were the only place she could have been at the time of the photo is the victim's place that's the only place that makes sense that. naturally the witness was right here B but that's but that's where the victim miss Hawford was standing I'm still trying to figure out this judge's voice order 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 miss Faye what on earth your Honor, if I may, after parting with the victim on the bridge, the defendant fled by car. But how did the body... And that's how... She was wearing a different coat. The body was already in the trunk. Ah, but that's a thought, that's a thought. Because it's almost like she was cornered on the bridge. But the car was already there. But it had to be broken into. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. But this would mean that there was no time to put the victim in the trunk. In other words, if someone put the body in the trunk, it could only have been before the defendant met the victim. But now the contradiction for me is 
that car was stolen by Faller. Fallers, right? How asinine! Of course Mr. Falls met with the victim. The only person with the opportunity to have the vic put the victim in the trunk is the same man that killed her, Terry Fowles. You still don't understand, do you, Mr. Edgeworth? By the time the witness's photo was taken, the victim was already dead. The person in the photo was not Valerie Hawthorne. What? I'd never heard anything more ridiculous in my entire life. Then who exactly is the victim in this photo? We already covered this. It's obvious, isn't it? It's your own witness. What? It's the only possible explanation. The woman that Mr. Falls met on the bridge that day was not Valerie Hawthorne. It was you, Melissa Foster. M me? Let's remember that it was raining and foggy on the mountain that day. Mr. Falls himself believed that the woman in front of him was Valerie Hawthorne. But the defendant knew Valerie Hawthorne very well. After all, she was the woman whose testimony helped get him convicted. The scarf for identification. But since then, my client has spent five hard years in federal penitentiary. He couldn't remember exactly what she looked like anymore. You're just making this up as you go along. Where's your proof? I've got it all right here. This piece of evidence will blow this case wide open. At the time of the incident, Mr. Falls had forgotten what Valerie had looked like. Victim note. Mr. Foss had forgotten the victim's face. That's why he needed some piece of identification. Namely, this muddy scarf. Ah! Uh, it was Mr. Falls who requested that she wear this scarf to identify herself. That's already been proven by the note the victim left. In other words, as long as you were wearing a scarf like he asked, anyone could have pretended to be Valerie Hawthorne. Well, what do you have to say to that, Melissa Foster? <laughs> Uh, no, no! She fainted? Yep, she fainted. Uh, ah. Uh, where's Mrs. Foster? She's collecting herself in the lobby. Hmm. But it can't be that easy because this is where things go bad. It's obvious that Melissa Foster did it. She hid the body in the trunk and disguised herself as the victim. I still wouldn't know when she did that, because it's Fall's stolen car. How did she... Did it? She set up the camera to snap a fake photo of them together. The only question is, why did she do it? Well, isn't that obvious? She's the real culprit. Ha! But I think more motive... Well, we'll have to wait for Mrs. Foster to compose herself before we start again. Until then, this court is in recess. The defense and the prosecution are both to wait in their respective lobbies. Yes, Your Honor. Understood. Very well. This court is in recess. Well, then. I think we can go a bit longer. But that, that was intense and frustrating. Going up against, like, pure evil Edgeworth is not a fun time, Billy. But now we need more information from our, 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 our dude, our defendant. Mr. Falls, I... He, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I want to say thanks. You're really good. You really hooked me up. Thanks. We're almost there. Once I prove that she committed the crime. Yeah, but there's one more big obstacle we've got to get past. An obstacle? Yeah, motive. Why would Melissa Foster kill the policewoman anyway? Motive, huh? Anyway, we're still badly in need of information. Information, right. What we need the most is info about this Melissa Foster herself. All we know is that she's a student studying literature. And one more thing. What is it? Well, the incident that happened five years ago, of course. The kidnapping murder case that Zebra Boy is on death row for. I didn't do nothing! I didn't kill nobody! I never lie! Mr. Falls, in that case, tell us more about it. About what happened five years ago. Okay, I trust you. That day, five years ago, I dreamt of it. I dream of it every night. This picture, it reminds me everything. 
bridge looked same, just like them, five years ago. Like it could fall apart, fall apart any minute. So it's been broken like that for at least five years. Ha! Huh. Sorry, buddy, but you sound like the one that could fall apart any minute. It's true. I did. I did kidnap her. Five years ago, I kidnapped my girlfriend, Dahlia Hawthorne. Y y girlfriend huh? Hey, hold on there. Did you say Hawthorne? The victim's last name. Oh, oh. Oh. Talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time. The whole truth. What? What? Talk to Dahlia. The tr Are we sure that this note... Are, are we sure that this note is written this year? It just says February 14th. We don't know when. Just five years ago. We don't know the exact date. It is entirely possible that... Wait, no. No, no. That wouldn't work. That wouldn't work because they were in normal clothes. Right? But... No, 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 no. That bridge. That's the only thing that's really tying this to the present. This note was found in Hawthorne's desk. Talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time the whole truth. What does that mean? Because we, because now that we know Dahlia, Dahlia is dead. He's convicted of murder. Unless Dahlia survived and Hawthorne covered it up somehow. But my my theory is this is referring to five years ago. And that's kind of why... That's why the wagon crashed. It was set up by Hawthorne. So that... But... I don't know. Wear the white scarf for identification. That bridge. Why that bridge? Because the first part, meet at 4.30, that bridge, wear white scarf for identification, feels like it's talking about the modern day, but talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time. The whole truth must come out. What does that mean? Dahlia is dead. But if this note is from five years ago, down to uh, two days in the past... What does it mean to meet Falls 430 at that bridge? Well, we might get more answers, but... <laughs> yeah. Dahlia Hawthorne, Valerie, Valerie's little sister. B what? Are you serious? The girl. Let her go! Shut up! C come closer, and I kill her! She's not wearing a scarf, so that kind of does it. Sorry, but you're not going to get the chance. Oh, I have an idea. But he, ha he does have a knife. The detective back then was Valerie Hawthorne. But he said he kidnapped his girlfriend. Oh, is he a creep? Is Dahlia? I forget exactly what what he said specifically, but why does he have a knife pointing at her? Because I initially figured that maybe the not a step closer, I'll kill her is him saying badly that if she comes too close, the bridge might crumble and she'll fall. But we'll, we need more information. At first I thought shooting someone for a kidnapping was crossing the line, but... If it was to protect her little sister, I can understand why she did it. Wrong. No, no protect sister! Valerie, betray me! Betray us! What do you mean she betrayed you? Everything. All lies. All make-believe kidnapping, too. A make-believe kidnapping? Dahlia. 
My girlfriend, my love, my teen angel. Creepy, creepy. Uh, did he actually say my teen angel? He's seen one too many soap operas. How old are you, my dude? Oh, uh, how old are you? 25. He would have been 20 and she would have been 14. At least that's what I think they said. Weird. I do anything she says. Anything Dahlia says. Anything Dahlia says? Uh, hold on a minute. What you're saying is that the kidnapping five years ago was planned by... Yeah, me and Dahlia. And Valerie, too. Valerie was in on it? Dahlia's family rich. Jewelry. Business. We get one jewel. That's what we thought. Me and Dahlia wrote kidnap note. We send to her dad. Ask for two million dollar diamond. Tell him make exchange on Dusky Bridge. We tell him Valerie make transfer because she knew detective. Having a police detective in your pocket is a useful thing, all right. In the end, you were planning on splitting the two million three ways, huh? Yeah, but that woman! That woman, Valerie! She do it for real! She shoot at me for real! Me and Dahlia! I was shot in the arm. Dahlia. She jump in the river. Jump? You don't mean she jumped on purpose, do you? I couldn't do it. I could never push her. Anyway, I blacked out. Wake up with police all over. And that's when they decided to give you the death sentence. Okay. Okay, this is getting weirder. This is getting weird. Dahlia jumped in. Could it be that Dahlia and... Okay, so I think my note theory of it being five years ago is wrong. Nobody was wearing a scarf. I just wonder if that was the possibility as a twi twitchy twitchy trick because my brain goes into hyper conspiracy mode. But Dahlia is alive, isn't she? Because, hmm. Okay, so Dahlia plans the kidnapping, tells Falls to send a ransom note to her parents, demanding a $2 million diamond to be handed off by Valerie. But Valerie instead shoots for real, which causes, which releases Dahlia from Falls' grip, but Dahlia then jumps into the river. I swear Dahlia seems like a familiar name, but I don't know, I don't know. But it's weird. It's weird, 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 weird. But Dahlia has to be alive then. Because... Hmm. Because otherwise, tell Dahlia everything. Everything has to come out. What does that mean? Then again, this guy seems kind of stupid. So it's entirely possible that Valerie... It's entirely possible that Valerie... Uh, no, because he said that they two didn't. He and Dolly. Let's continue. I couldn't believe it. That woman, she betrayed me! That man, Terry Falls, he killed her. He threw her off the bridge. He threw my beloved sister into the Roaring River, 40 feet below! Huh. These five years, all I wonder is, why? Why, why, why? Why did she lie? That's all I want to know. So that's why you called her. You wanted to hear the truth from Valerie herself. Yes, but I forget what she looked like, so I tell her to wear a scarf. I don't want to hurt her. Just ask why. Why? Why did you lie? Why did you betray me? I just want to hear answer come from her mouth. That's all. So that's why. That's why he made a crazy escape like that. Just one thing, Zebra Boy. My senses are tingling all over. Tell me, Mr. Fowles, where is it? Huh? Where's what? Come on now, kitten. The ransom. The two million dollar diamond. That, that would be very important. Remember that now. 
Did you give it back to Pops? Did the police take it? I don't know. Huh? You don't know? No, really, I don't know. It's gone. With Dahlia. With Dahlia? <laughs> we flash back to this for the millionth time. That day, on the bridge, Dahlia put it in backpack. Now gone with Dahlia. Gone forever. Into Eagle River. Hmm. It disappeared with Dahlia, huh? Wait a minute. You can come back now. We're about ready to go. Mr. Falls, just one more question. When you said with Dahlia, do you mean the diamond is still missing? Along with the body of Dahlia Hawthorne? Never found her. My sweet Dahlia. I never found her. Swallowed by a river, gone. Dahlia, my teen angel. Your teen angel? How old was she anyway? Just 14. 14? Guess you were robbing cradles before diamonds. She plans a fake kidnapping and disappears into the river with a rock with two mil. Man, oh man, angels these days. Th this has gone deep. False takes the fall and gets a one-way ticket to death row. Is Dahlia Hawthorne an angel or is she really a... It's time, kitten. It looks like we have a few more aces up our sleeve now. You bet. Diamond added to the court record. The training wheels come off now, Mia. You've got to strike while the iron's hot. And that's one of my rules. Remember it. Why does he have, like, belts around his elbows? To keep his shirt fluffy. All right, very interesting. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Now then, let's continue with the trial of Mary, Mr. Terry Fowles. Witness, are you feeling better? Yes, Your Honor. I I'll try my best. Hmm, you're a brave young lady. Not this again. I can understand a defense lawyer wanting to get a client off the hook. However, to try to pin the crime on an innocent student is... What are you talking about? My witness is not the person on trial here. She's an innocent bystander who witnessed a violent crime, that's all. What possible reason would a girl like this have for murdering a policewoman? Hmm, it's certainly hard to imagine this woman as a murderer. Her motive, huh? I figured that's what I had to establish next. Well, Miss Fabe, do you have any evidence of a motive? I feel like we're gonna try and save a diamond. Uh, yes, of course, I think. Ha! He has to act in as tame as a kitten, kitten. Mr. Armando? Listen, a lawyer is someone who smiles no matter how bad it gets. Smiling on the outside while your guts are twisted in knots is the mark of a pro. Maybe so, but I wish you would quit grinning at me like that. Um, excuse me, may I speak, Mr. Judge? Of course! Mr. Judge is ready any time you like. I'd like, I'd like to say something. Some people here are suspicious of me, right? Th that's why I, I at least wanted you, Mr. Judge, to know that it's not true. Hmm, I see. You're such an honest and upstanding young lady. It looks like this witness is a real professional. What do you mean? Look at that 100-watt face. Just when things are darkest for her, click, she lights right up. Very well, then. Let's hear what the witness has to say. I keep changing this guy's voice. I... I was out of the country until the year before last. You're Dahlia, aren't you? Like, you have to be. Hard to... Uh, to see a family resemblance, but like, that's the only thing that makes sense, is if she's Dahlia, and she's trying to clean up the loose ends. But it's kind of convenient. She comes back, hmm. But again, tell Dahlia everything. What does that mean? What does it mean? What does it mean? I don't know. Until I entered college, I had never even been to Eagle Mountain before. And I recently don't have any reason for wanting to hurt a police officer. Yo, I'm back. <laughs> we are in the middle of just craziness right now. <laughs> oh, my conspiracy brain has just been firing off. And I recently don't have any 
I certainly don't have any reason for wanting to hurt a police officer. Holding a grudge and killing the officer who testified against you five years ago, or kidnapping a poor girl, I just think the defendant is a terrible, horrible monster. Hmm, out of the country, eh? Precisely. Furthermore, she has no possible motive for committing murder. Hmm, indeed. You're up to bat, kitten. Sharpen those claws and put on your best smile. You bet. Somehow I have to tie her to this case. <laughs> Tell Dahlia everything? Yeah, it's just like, I'm trying to figure this all out. Because right now, right now, at first I thought maybe the victim note came from five years ago. Because tell Dahlia everything, Dahlia might be dead, but Dahlia is certainly alive now because she intentionally jumped into the river with the diamond. And she obviously had to be in league with Valerie because... She, because Dahlia and Valerie worked together to fleece Terry into getting that diamond. But then when Valerie shot at Terry in the arm... Dahlia jumped into the river. In fact, it kind of looks similar. <laughs> Last name, siblings. Yeah, Dahlia Hawthorne and Valerie Hawthorne are the, like, uh, siblings that's been established. I'm just wondering if Melissa Foster isn't who she says she is. But it doesn't make sense because Melissa Foster was the, the murderer of the first case. So she has to go free. Yeah, because basically, what we know now is five years ago, Terry was be He's basically mentally deficient. He's very weird. And was calling Dahlia Hawthorne, 14-year-old. 19. You're fucking Dahlia. <laughs> five years ago. Now you're 19. <laughs> but yeah. Dahlia Hawthorne was apparently this guy's boy uh, girlfriend. Or at least according to his twisted logic, he's mentally deficient. And him, Valerie, and Dahlia teamed up to fleece their parents' jewelry store for a $2 million diamond. It was meant to be, oh, D D Valerie is a detective. She can just come on in and pretend to do the handoff, and they can split the $2 million five, uh, three ways. But then Valerie shoots for real. He lets go, passes out. Dahlia jumps into the river with the diamond in her backpack, and her body was never found. And now he escaped... Wanted to meet with Valerie at the same bridge to know why the why they betrayed him and shot at him and leading to Dahlia to presumably die. And uh, we assume, we are starting to assume that Valerie was already dead by the time he met them because of this here photo. Wrong photo. That's her dead body. We know she died between four and five. But this is here. We assume that that is uh, Foster. Things are all crazy. Things are all crazy here. Here's the thing. What if Valerie wasn't Valerie? It wouldn't work. Be I don't think it would work. If Valerie wasn't Valerie. Because the only way that would work, I think, is if like Valerie. Yeah, that that doesn't that sounds a bit too crazy. But like Valerie is like was found in the trunk. That is confirmed to be Valerie the police officer. That is confirmed to be her according to the court. And we presume that actually hmm, maybe huh, that makes me wonder. Because it had to be Valerie though. Uh, Valerie could have channeled no. No she couldn't. Because she's not a... Not sure what you're getting at, because... Valerie can't be channeled, I don't think. But, like, the, there's no time for her to be channeled. Like, the channeling thing, uh, Twist was already done with, like, ish, with, uh... The first case of the second game? No, it was the second case of the second game. Or was it the first case? I forget. It's been a long time. But, like... Yeah, channeling doesn't have anything to do with this case. Not this one. But, yeah. 
while... Because he knew Valerie and Dahlia. And he just says that after five years in prison, he uh, couldn't recognize her face. A part of me thinks that, like, maybe he, uh, it could have been someone else, but the diamond had to be, like, handed off. Valerie brought the diamond to Terry and Dahlia at the bridge. Dahlia put the diamond in her backpack. And when Valerie shot, Dahlia jumped. And again, we know that, like, wrong thing. I keep, I keep pressing the wrong things. Blech. Yeah. Falls there, talk to Dahlia, tell her this time, the whole truth must come out. So, Valerie knows that da Dahlia is alive. So it's possible that... Hmm. Talk to Dahlia, tell her this time. I don't know what the tell her this time means. But the whole truth must come out. Or maybe it's kind of a thing. Tell Dahlia that the whole truth must come out. So it's not telling Dahlia the truth. It is telling Dahlia that the truth has to come out. So it's possible that Valerie felt guilty for what happened to Terry Falls. And when she got a call from Falls to meet up at the bridge, she called her sister, or like met up with her sister, and said, I'm going to tell Terry what happened for real. And tell him why we betrayed him. And that's when... Dahlia, now in her new identity of Foster, killed her sister, wore her scarf, and because more than likely, Valerie wanted Dahlia to be at the bridge as well to meet up everything, and that would also explain things. But and I did, uh, lots of things. <laughs> Phoenix fell there and hadn't survived. I don't think I've gotten to the point where Phoenix has fallen anywhere. But we couldn't verify that Dahlia died. Yeah, we don't. We have no idea that... Uh, in fact, that's kind of what we're, everything's pointing to, that Dahlia isn't dead. But yeah, Phoenix fell there and he survived. I don't know. I'm unaware of Phoenix falling into rivers. Because another thing that stickies this case is... This character, this face, appears in the first case of this game. Which is a tutorial that takes place after this case, if that makes sense. Because in that case, uh, it is revealed that Melissa here was in the courthouse and was trying to get rid of a necklace that had poison in it, or like, she used a poison, I think. It's been a bit since I played that case. And she handed it, the necklace off to Phoenix, pretending that it's a gift. And then Phoenix is like, oh, we're dating now. And then she kind of dated him for a long time to try and get the poison necklace back. And then she was convicted in that case. Or at least I think so. It's the same model animations and everything. I forget her name, but at the same time, the name Dahlia's familiar. I don't know. I'm losing my mind. We need to continue. Well, let's see. I was out of the country until the year before last. Until I entered college, I had never even been to Eagle Mountain before. And certainly don't have any reason for wanting to hurt a police officer. Holding a grudge and killing the officer who testified against you five years ago, or kidnapping a poor girl, I just think the defendant is a terrible monster. There's a lot to go on here. She wanted to get the necklace from Phoenix because she used uh, it to poison someone. Yeah. She had poison in that necklace and handed it off to him so that it wouldn't be on her when she was in a courtroom being investigated and then tried to get it back a lot and that was a key moment for the tutorial case of this game. Okay. There's a lot going on in this testimony. Okay. She was out of the country until the year before last, meaning that it is entirely possible that she was indeed Dahlia and she fled the country with the $2 million diamond until just last year. And then she entered college and claims to never have been to Eagle Mountain before. Then why were you there that night specifically? And I certainly don't have any reason for wanting to hurt a police officer. That seems very specific and weird. Uh, by River uh, for Phoenix, I mean River of Trouble for Melissa. Ah, but we're not playing Phoenix. <laughs> this is a flashback where Mia is uh, the prosecutor, not prosecutor, but the defender. This is actually Mia's first case against uh, Edgeworth's first case, which is kind of hilarious. 
but yeah, there's a lot to go on and I have no idea. I still don't know if I want to press or not because the, the judge is mean and kind of threatens me. But let's let's look through. I don't think we can... We should. I was out of the country until the year before last. The year before last. So two years ago, actually? The year before last. That seems a little weird. The stone. Melissa wanted to kill Valley for the 2.5 million stone. I know that's definitely not it. Because of the, the talk to Dahlia, tell her this time the whole truth must come out. I think that she killed Valerie because Valerie was going to come clean with Terry about the whole thing. And that would that would reveal that Dahlia's still alive, and then Dahlia would be outed. So, hmm, let's see. I don't think so. Hmm, and reason to... Holding a grudge. Hmm. These two, I think, are kind of interesting because it's commenting on things she might not know about, or maybe she learned. It's, it's kind of vague in this game, and I'm paranoid. I should probably save. Paranoia, paranoia. Let's see. Holding a grudge and killing the officer who testified against you five years ago. Hmm. Holding a grudge and killing the officer who testified against you five years ago. Do I want to press on this? We need to establish why Melissa would be connected, then reveal that she's Dahlia for the motive. Well, we already know how Melissa is kind of connected, because right now, we're arg uh, previously, we are actually saying that she staged everything and that she, uh, this lady, Melissa, killed Valerie, posed as Valerie in front of Terry. Ba -ba -ba. I just need to think. Hmm. Holding a grudge and killing the officer, because I get him. What do I want to press on? Out of the country, I don't think that's important to the case right now. We need to establish, like, hmm. Ba -ba. Until I entered college, I don't think so. I certainly don't have any reason to hurt money in her police officer, I don't think so. I think it's one of these two. I think it's one of these two. Holding a grudge and killing the thing. I want to press on this one. I'm going to press this one. A grudge? Well, the policewoman's testimony was crucial, wasn't it? crucial in getting the defendant sentenced to death. Yes, and that's precisely why he harbored such deep anger against her. So much anger that he forgot his own guilt. My client has always maintained that he's an innocent of those charges. He seems rather forgetful, your client, I mean. Not only did he forget about what he did, but he forgot the poor policewoman as well. What do you mean by that? Your client, he forgot what the detective looked like, right? It's too bad for her that he didn't forget about her testimony as well. Uh, so how would Melissa know about five years ago if she was out of the country? I think the game could kind of hand wave that maybe she heard about it because the murder happened two, two days ago for, like, Valerie. Valerie died two days ago. So it's possible that Melissa could have heard about it on the news, like, ah, criminal who was convicted five years ago killed police officer that is accused of killing police officer that got him convicted through testimony. But yeah, and plus if we're assuming that she is uh, Dahlia, technically that's also a lie, but we can't establish that just yet. Well, she's right about that. Mr. Falls is kind of forgetful. I'm going to press harder. I want more. You said he forgot what the detective looked like. What do you mean by that? Well, he couldn't tell who she was without some kind of identification, right? Quite right. That's why the victim was wearing a scarf as identification. Why, well, if I'd been wearing a white scarf that day, then he probably would have tried to kill me. Hmm, that's true. He's clearly a bitter man. This is bad. Mr. Fall's reputation just keeps getting worse and worse. Sometimes it's best not to poke too deep. What should I do with that last statement? I'm going to have it added to the testimony. Your Honor, what the witness just said now was tremendously important. I'd like it added to the official testimony. The prosecution has no objection. After all, the defendant is a killer and a mentally unbalanced one at that. The testimony only helps to further prove that point. Hmm. No, that's not why I... Enough. Witness if you would. My pleasure, Mr. Judge. So obviously that's important. 
that specific though. These games go pretty specific. I guess I'm lucky I wasn't wearing a white scarf. Obviously that has to be important. But one thing I believe that is very important is that she's specifically saying a white scarf. Edgeworth only said that she wore the the scarf as the identification. She could have just said un scarf, a scarf. I'm going to say bibbidi bobbidi boo. Shoot you head. Witness, I want you to look at this photo you took. It's hard to see in the photo, but look at the scarf the victim wore as identification. Ah, you're talking about this. Oh, oh, are we going that route? Are we actually going to say that this scarf isn't the scarf that's being worn in the photo or something? Ooh, ooh. I mean, that's weird. She knew the color of it. Yeah. Yes, that's it. The scarf the policewoman was wearing. I've got her now. Just don't mess up. But that's strange. In your testimony, you stated the following. I guess I'm lucky I wasn't wearing a white scarf. B white? This is the scarf you identified as belonging to the victim. But it certainly doesn't look white to me. Oh. I just go with the flow. <laughs> well, it was foggy that day, and it was raining as well. I'm not surprised. It's not surprising that she mistook it for white. Sorry, but not this time. The witness just confirmed that this was the victim's scarf. Yes, but what's the significance? It's true that the scarf doesn't look white, but there's only one explanation for this mix-up. The reason why the witness thought the scarf was white is... She's colorblind and she knew the victim's note? I, I don't know. Wait, the only reason why the witness thought the scarf was white. I don't know. It can't be autopsy, it can't be bridge. I don't think it would be the scarf itself. The the reason. The reason. Let's let's check profiles. My client sentence death. Police officer and victim, the key witness. Hotshot lawyer, my senior, a bit smug. Homicide detective, no. College student, witnesses to photograph by the incident. Hmm. Valerie's younger sister, Victor, fell from the bridge, no body found. How would she... The reason. The reason why the witness thought the scarf was white. Hmm. Okay, let's go over all the information about the scarf. It is first mentioned here, wear white scarf for identification, talk to Dahlia. If we assume that. Hmm. Talk to Dahlia. And if it was out and raining... By Glimmer Electric, she thought it was white because she wrote it? She thought it was white because... Valerie told her. If we go by the logic of talk to Dahlia, tell her, she'll say, I'm going to be wearing a white scarf for identification for Falls. And she thought... It was... And like we're saying, we're assuming that Dahlia is alive. And if she was 14 five years ago, she would be 19 years old. So I am... I'm going to present Dahlia's profile and hope the game goes... The witness thought the scarf was white... Because Valerie was going to tell Dahlia about everything. So let's -a go! Let's -a go! Oh, I, I pressed the wrong button. Ah, present! 
What if Melissa wrote the letter and, Val uh, and Valerie was already dead and used the white scarf? That wouldn't work because the note was found in Valerie's desk already, back at the precinct. She wrote it after she got the call from Terry, and then wrote that note about meeting Terry at 4.30 at the bridge, and about telling Dahlia everything. Here's the definitive piece of evidence that proves it! That... that's your definitive piece of evidence? Yes! If I'm thinking is correct. It should be. Well then, we have one mystery solved. The answer is simple. Miss Face thinking is wrong. That's all there is to it. Hmm, I guess I could be wrong. Huh? Please, kitten. You've got to do something. You're killing me over here. Miss Fay, I've got a definitive penalty to reward you. Damn it. Because I wanted to present it as like... Well, what do you have evidence or not? Perhaps you can tell us about why? There's only one explanation, yeah, and I thought it was that. Unless they want me to present the victim's note. Because I could have sworn it would have been that. Hmm. I guess we'll present the victim's note. She know about the victim's note. I was too- I was thinking too esoteric. <laughs> thinking it's just like, oh, we gotta bounce. Thinking that it was not enough we have to say that she is Dahlia. Because she would know about the note. But I guess I could have done the note first. Bleh. Have you ever seen this note? N note? I, uh, no, never. It's top secret evidence. There's no reason that you would have. Hmm, I wonder about that. What do you mean? This note shows Mr. Fall's instructions to the victim regarding their meeting. It says wear white scarf for identification. White scarf? Ah! Witness, you knew what this note said! And it's because you knew that you slipped up and mistakenly said white scarf! Uh, uh. Well, Miss Foster? No! Order! 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 Mr. Edgeworth, I'm waiting for an explanation. I'm quite sure this note wasn't leaked to the public. And yet, this witness knew exactly what the note said. At the time of the murder, the number of people that knew were quite limited. Terry Falls is one. The person who wrote the note, Valerie Hawthorne, is another. And finally, one more person. Are you saying that I presented it too early, game? That my esoteric thinking is correct, but one step too early? Damn you. Did you say one more person? That's right. A person that no one would have suspected. Have you figured it out, kitten? Yep. The third person that knew the contents of the note was... It also doesn't help that I keep forgetting that profiles exist as evidence that can be presented. So I kind of psyched myself. I was just like, oh, now's the time to use the, the profiles. Dilly dee. And that person is Dahlia Hawthorne. Dahlia Hawthorne? I've never heard that name before. Look at the victim's note. This is what it says. Talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time. There is her name right there. But what's this? So who is this person, this Dahlia Hawthorne? <sighs> Miss Faye must be desperate if she's trying to bring the dead back to life. The d dead Dahlia Hawthorne was the victim's deceased younger sister. She was killed in a crime five years ago. Killed in a crime? You don't mean! Yes, she was kidnapped and killed by Terry Fowles. Flick my bangs. You said she was killed, but was she really? What are you implying? Of course, people thought she died five years ago when she fell off Dusky Bridge and was lost in the Eagle River. However, her corpse was never found. She was declared legally dead five years ago. As far as the law is concerned, Dahlia Hawthorne is officially dead. But the fact remains that her body was never recovered. Dahlia Hawthorne was 14 years old five years ago. If she were still alive, she would be 19 now. Melissa Foster, I believe that's the same age you are. Ah! Even you couldn't... Miss Faye, you're not sane! Flick my bangs. But I am. That's precisely what I'm saying. This witness before us is the girl that was kidnapped and killed five years ago. This girl is in fact Miss Dahlia Hawthorne! 
What? What? Ha! Nice work. That was like tossing a grenade into a three-alarm fire. But unless you can tie all the loose ends together, you're nothing but a hit-and-run arsonist. I... I understand. If I can expose her true nature, I can war turn this whole case on its head. Now's my chance to make Mr. Edgeworth squirm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Witness, just who are you, anyway? I, I, I'm... I didn't think it come to this. That's enough. You don't have to say any more, Witness. Yes, I understand. What? Mr. Edgeworth, explain yourself! Your Honor, I have an admission to make. I honestly never thought the defense would pursue the matter this far. You don't... You don't mean... Yes, the prosecutor's office isn't filled with fools, you know. Naturally, we conduct full background checks on all of our witnesses. What did he say? Ha! <laughs> it looks like the kid knew. He knew her identity from the get-go. No way, but then why? If you hadn't revealed a secret, he wasn't going to say anything about it. All he wanted was her testimony, so he made a little trade. Let me introduce you to... The victim's younger sister, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. I feel like it would be very important, my dude, to reveal that. Because now she does have some... <laughs> now she does! She does have, because she was the one who last seen the diamond! But, but... I thought she died five years ago! We thought so as well, but... Well, as you can see... Why? Why did she hide her identity for five years? That has nothing to do with this curtain case. Her sister is dead. She was merely an accidental witness to a crime. So convenient to be at her sister's murder. Accidental? I don't believe that for a minute. For the last five years, she's been playing the role of a victim. And now we find her acting suspiciously at the scene of another murder. Her sister's murder. Really, Miss Fay, I must say your strategy here is painfully obvious. You're trying to pin your client's crime on an innocent witness in order to win. At any cost. How dare you! Please, let us take a moment to think. Five years ago, this girl was kidnapped and nearly killed. Hmm. But even worse than that, five years later, Dahlia Hawthorne lost something much more precious. Her big sister. But she was there at the crime. Miss Faye must be insane to even suggest that she murdered her. What? I'm inclined to agree with the prosecutor's logic. Miss Faye, do you have any evidence to back up your assertion? What possible reason would the witness have for killing her beloved sister? Well, you see, I thought I was winning, but somebody's turned it around on me. I feel it's highly suspicious that somebody who was... Uh, besides, doesn't that mean that he's off death row? In that case, granted, like, everything is wonky here. Huh. I think you need a little push in the right direction, kitten. The defense is prepared to present evidence supporting our claim. Who? Oh. Was that was that me or was it Amando? Good dog. Uh, that wasn't me. It was this guy, this crazy coffee addict. I think we've heard enough empty threats from you, old man. Huh. <laughs> What makes you think they're empty, boy? Because your protege looks like she's sweating bullets. Uh, I am sweating bullets. You think you're in a tough spot, huh? Of course, aren't I? No. You just arrived at the moment of truth, that's all. Whether you win or lose, that's up to you. Up to me? Ah, the rashness of youth, how charming. This is coming from someone younger than me. Now then, let's not waste any more time. Miss Faye, what motive would this witness have for murdering her own sister, Valerie Hawthorne? The diamond, I presume. Like, obviously it had to be, right? Hmm. Da, 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 da. But, I, I, but it can't be that obvious at the same time. Hmm. I was so sure about presenting the profile on the wrong thing. The only two... I don't... Because here's the thing. We need something 
that ties to this case. Technically, the diamond hasn't been introduced. Technically. And normally this game is kind of, these games are kind of wonky. So I think actually it's the victim's note. <laughs> the stone, money is the root of all evil, I'd say it's valid. Yeah, but these games are wonky. We need to, we need to, basically we need to tie. We can't just say, present the diamond. And, because here's the thing. We know that Terry said that Dahlia and Valerie teamed up to take the diamond using him as a scapegoat. That's not, like, considered in the current case. What we need is something that's connected to the current case to be pr presented, of which the victims note, because talk to Dahlia, tell her this time the whole truth must come out. Some truth was going to come out, and therefore Dahlia would have been the last one to talk to Valerie before she died, if we are correct. I'm, I'm going to go on a whim. <laughs> the story starts after Terry Falls escaped. He called Valerie and told her he wanted to meet. This is the note she left. It says, talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time, the whole truth must come out. Valerie Hawthorne gave Dahlia a warning. She told her she was going to reveal to the world the whole truth. The whole truth? There was a dangerously important secret between Valerie and Dahlia. That's the reason Dahlia felt she had to kill Valerie. To keep her mouth shut permanently. <laughs> Evil stare at Dahlia. She deserves it. <laughs> a terrific story, Miss Fay, if you like fiction, that is. Enlighten the court, Miss Fay. What was this secret that was so important? Where's your evidence? Dahlia and Valerie Hawthorne and Terry Falls. There's only one important secret that connects them all. Oh, yes, I know this secret. Your Honor, the defense would like to request further testimony. But what testimony? Regarding the kidnapping five years ago, we believe it will explain a lot of things, such as the nature of the important secret between the Hawthorne sisters. Huh? Very well, I'll grant your request for further testimony. The main thing, it just... It feels weird because I knew that Dahlia, because her name changed to Dahlia in the titles, that's funny. But, like, I feel like shouldn't have... Because, because, because... Again, Dahlia doesn't go to jail here. She's free to wander after this case because she shows up later in the timeline as the, uh, as the character of the first episode of this game. That is the, the, the criminal. And her name was Dahlia then, too. The one thing I'm wondering is, why doesn't Mia remember? Because I don't think Mia specifically said that Dahlia was also in a case that she, the one case she worked on. And Dahlia never says anything about Mia either, I don't think. But we need to go further. Very well, I'll grant your request for further testimony. There's a reason for that, but I won't spoil. Terry will be a vital clue. Interesting. He gives us amnesia. I know it'll be painful for you, but can you enlighten us once more, my little maple leaf? He is Canadian. Yes, I I'll try, Mr. Judge. Putting on the old charm one more time, Dahlia. But this time, but this will be the last time you hide behind your womanly wiles. Yeah, no, un un until later. Until the first case of this game. Five years ago, I was kidnapped by Mr. Falls. The ransom price was a raw diamond. My sister Valerie brought it to the bridge. After she made the exchange, she shot Mr. Falls in the arm. That feels... bad. But then that, that, that exonerates him. That's when Mr. Falls tried to kill me. Oh, that's when he tried to kill me by shooting me off the bridge. But if he was shot, he wouldn't really be able to do that. I survived, but I was afraid I might be kidnapped again for my family's money. So I decided to change my identity and start a new life. That feels too weird. Uh, uh, too weird. Hmm. The kidnapping left her emotionally scarred. With her sister's help, she left the Hawthorne family and started all over again. 
And were to believe, after all that, she murdered her sister? Preposterous! Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Miss Fay? Yes, Your Honor? As you've heard, the witness is still traumatized from the kidnapping. I'll ask you again to be extremely gentle in your cross-examination. Which basically means, don't press on anything unless you're a million percent sure. Mr. Edgeworth got the jump on me again. Ha! Huh. If we're not allowed to fight, then let's twist some arms. Listen up, we've still got that info. The ace up our sleeve. What info? Come on, kitten. Don't say you've forgotten already. The fact that her kidnapping five years ago was staged. That's right, it was fake kidnapping. Terry Falls told us that in the lobby. I'd do anything, she says. Anything Dahlia says. What you're saying is that the kidnapping five years ago was planned by... Yeah, me and Dahlia. And Valerie, too. Yes, that's it! The fake kidnapping is your best shot, Mia. That's her secret. We'll get to the end at least of this testimony and see. Five years ago, I was kidnapped by Mr. Ma Mr. Falls. I don't know. Hmm. Let's see. Kidnapped by Mr. Falls. Ransom was a diamond my sister Valerie brought to the bridge after she made the exchange on my art. That's when Mr. Falls tried to kill me by shoving me off the bridge from behind. I survived, but I was afraid. This one seems the most important. Like, some of these other ones are kind of true, but this one, there's something about it. Something about it. That's when Mr. Falls tried to kill me by shoving me off the bridge from behind. Hmm. We know Terry's testimony on that, that he was shot and she jumped. Hmm. Shoving me off the bridge from behind. Let's take a look at the, the Dusky Bridge map. Because if it was in the same place as the other photo, but with the roles reversed, of which, uh, basically in the middle, but basically near the cliffs, like the rocky, the rocks below. If she was pushed behind, she would have fallen on the rocks. Well, think about it. Let's see. Uh, well, think about it. If he had the diamond, but he didn't. She did. Because she put it in the backpack. But I don't think that's, like, super relevant right now. Because she says that she handed it off. But we need to present things like super duper. I'm going to say, but yeah, shoving me off the bridge from behind, she is referencing the broken state of the bridge. And if it's the exact same broken state that this is, she would have fallen to her death rather determinedly. Do I do I do it? Is there anything else? Because we need... Because again, this is the only one that, that I feel is contradictory. And plus, we actually see in the flashback, she jumps off the side. Yeah, and it makes no sense for him to drop his leverage, right? Because that, that is something that you, I wish I could argue, because why would Valerie shoot at Terry when Terry is holding her, her sister hostage after getting the diamond? He still has her hostage, has the diamond. All she has to say is... Is let her go, and I'll let you go. I'm, I'm going to say present this map for this as a contradiction. She says he shoved her backwards through the broken panels of the bridge. I'm going to say that's impossible. <laughs> the music stopped, but that's not a sign. Okay, I think this is good. It's unique dialogue and not the... This is the evidence. You say that Mr. Falls pushed you into the Eagle River. However, that's hard to believe. B but it's true. I felt a push on my back. I'm certain of it. It was Mr. Falls. <laughs> Brush my bangs. I'm sorry. I guess I wasn't clear enough. I shouldn't have said that's hard to believe. I should have said that's impossible. Uh, impossible? I asked the court recall the condition of Dusky Bridge now and five years ago. That bridge hasn't changed one bit in the last five years. If someone had pushed you from behind as you claimed... I knew it! Instead of being carried away by the river... 
You would have been dashed on the rocks below. You would have been smashed by the bedrock below. A most certain death. Do you understand now, Dahlia Hawthorne? The very notion that my client pushed you from behind is impossible! <laughs> because Valerie and Dahlia planned to betray Terry? Yeah. But they also wanted to get away with the diamond. But yeah, the Ace Attorney, <laughs> everything gets twisty in Ace Attorney. You have to focus on the here and now, what is directly being asked. You can't get distracted by other things. Your Honor, this event occurred five years ago. Why, for all we know, the water level in the river may have been higher back then. But it's 40 feet from the bridge to the river. A small change in the water level wouldn't have made a difference. <laughs> You're right! If the events occurred just as the witness has testified, then the defendant couldn't have pushed the witness into the river. Young lady, what is the meaning of this? Oh, uh, I, 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 er, uh, you see, I... Just a moment, Your Honor! It's true the witness testified that the defendant pushed her into the water. However, she never stated that she fell from the back end of the bridge. What? What do you mean? After being shot in the arm, it's plausible that Mr. Falls panicked. Therefore, he could have unwillingly pushed her to the side of the bridge, but there's a lot of suspension stuff. I don't think that'd work. She would have been knocked into the railings. If that's true, she would have fallen into the river. Well, Miss Hawthorne, is Mr. Edgeworth's explanation correct? Now that you mention it, I do remember now when I fell off the bridge, my skirt got caught on one of the bridge's side wires. You can't be serious! She said, push from behind. L order! Order in the court! It seems Miss Faye's assault has finally reached its conclusion. Not now, Mia. There's no time to retreat. Unfortunately for you, this is just the start of Miss Faye's assault. B what? I believe your reasoning went something like this, Mr. Edgeworth. After being shot in the arm, it's plausible that Mr. Falls panicked. Therefore, he could have unwillingly pushed her off the side of the bridge. However, once again, I'm forced to say that's impossible. Ridiculous! What's so impossible about it? Because your flawed logic contradicts the court record. Uh, does it? Is it the, the photo that shows the diddly D? Yeah, because in here, while it's possible that she might have fallen through, it's much, much less likely. There's far too many for someone to, like... It would be very, very convenient. I'm going to present this photo because... He did it, did it, did it. Your Honor, all of the answers are right here in this photo. Take a look at the wire supporting both sides of the bridge. They extend up to about five feet off the ground. It would be impossible for to push someone off from there. No! But let's remember the size and strength of the defendant. Wires like this wouldn't be a problem for him. He could have easily picked up a 14-year-old and thrown her over. But she said pushed. So young and already so forgetful, Mr. Edgeworth. Mr. Falls had been shot in the right arm. Ah! And more importantly, Valerie Hawthorne had her gun trained on him. At point blank range. <laughs> so, Mr. Falls throwing the witness off the bridge? That is clearly impossible. God! Order! Order! What is the meaning of this? Dahlia Hawthorne, you jumped into the Eagle River intentionally. What? What is this? Why was there a roar? Indeed. What do you mean by such a ridiculous remark? Yes, it's ridiculous. My sister was there to help me. She had a gun and handcuffs. She could have saved me. Jumping into a raging river like that, that would have been suicide. Perhaps, but still, that's exactly what you did. You were probably confident that you could handle the swift current. But even more so, the witness had a much more compelling reason for jumping into the river. Oh, then what was it? What was so important that she'd want to jump into the river? The witness is still alive. This fact alone explains everything. 
This is why she risked her life by jumping into the rapids of Eagle River. Now we can present the stone. Poor Edgeworth being humiliated from the first case he ever had. One has to wonder how he got his reputation. I just, I, I, this is the only thing that can be it, and if it's not it, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna scream. Five years ago, something else disappeared along with Dahlia that day. The item that Valerie brought up the mountain with her. The two million dollar diamond. <sighs> ah! No, it can't be! Yes, Dahlia had it planned from the beginning. The two million dollars? She was going to keep it for all herself! She forced Mr. Falls to help her fake the kidnapping. Her sister aided in it as well. At the last minute, she betrayed him and threw herself into the river, with the ransom tucked away safely in her backpack. Why, that's... that's simply ridiculous! It would explain how she's so wealthy now. Oh, he was going to say something, but... Your Honor, five years ago, the witness was only 14 years old. Do you really think a 14-year-old is capable of such a demonic plan? This woman is a demon. And there was one more person who helped make the demon out of her. Her sister, Valerie Hawthorne. You mean the victim was involved in the kidnapping plot as well? But she was a detective then. You're saying she participated in her sister's kidnapping? Precisely. I'm sure that it weighed heavily on her conscience for the past five years. That's why she was going to tell Dahlia that everything was going to come to light. <laughs> Marvin Grosberg, as well as Von Karma's underhanded tactics. Yep. It is kind of neat to see, like, super scummy Edgeworth back here because he is pulling out all the stops trying to stop me. This is the sole reason behind the victim's murder. What do you mean by that? On the day of the murder, after receiving the phone call from Mr. Falls, Valerie called her sister Dahlia, and then she told her what she was planning to do. Planning to do? She was going to tell the whole truth, as she wrote in her note. That is what sailed Valerie Hawthorne's fate. That is when you hatched your demonic plan to kill two birds with one stone. A plan that would ensure neither of your accomplices to the kidnapping would talk. And that is why you killed your sister, Valerie Hawthorne! <laughs> I still love that judge's face. He's so... <laughs> <laughs> Who is that? Laughing at a time like this? But how... But you exist in the first case. You can't go this. Forgive me, it's just hilarious. Witness? Is that you? You amuse me, woman, Miss Mia Fay. You can certainly weave an exciting tale. Naturally, you have the evidence to back it up, don't you? The evidence? Evidence that I planned the kidnapping, of course. That at 14, I plotted it with Mr. Falls and my sister. Well, I... And one more thing. What happened to the $2 million diamond? If you can't provide evidence to at least show that. Hmm. Well, Miss Fay, I... I don't know. What a joke. You, Miss Faye. Are you stupid or something? I think we should be easily be able to say, where was the diamond? Because Valerie didn't have the diamond. Terry didn't have the diamond. Dahlia is alive and was said to have the diamond. How can I prove a fake kidnapping that had been five years ago? I don't even have a decisive proof of Valerie Hawthorne's murder. Well, it seems that we've come to an end. To be honest, the witness's behavior does raise certain suspicions. However, I am forced to reject the assertions made by the defense. Of course you are. I don't think I can get out of this. Is this it? Is it really over? It would make sense for it to end in failure for us, considering what Diddly D said, Mia said in the first case. That girl's made a fool out of me, and there's nothing I can do about it. Huh. Without evidence, the trial's over? Who decided that? But Mr. Armando! Come on now, kitten. You haven't you figured out that you can make your own rules? For example, even if there's no evidence, there's still testimony. T testimony On the day in question, Dahlia Hawthorne murdered her sister, Valerie Hawthorne. She hid her body in the, tr in the trunk of Mr. Fall's stolen car and then went to meet him. 
Disguised as his sister, Valerie Hawthorne. That's what you think, right? Yes, that's right. In that case, there's only one answer, right? There's only one person left who can testify about Valerie Hawthorne's murder. We bring Terry out! <laughs> this isn't the end! I was just pausing, it was just like, I assume. But the one person who can, Terry! Your Honor, the defense wishes to call a new witness! A new witness? Yes, we would like to hear the testimony of Terry Falls. The defendant? There's only one person that can shed any further light on this situation. Only one person that knows what Dahlia's role in the kidnapping was. Only one person that can say whether the person in the photo is Valerie Hawthorne. Or whether it was in fact her younger sister Dahlia disguised as her. There's only one person who can solve this riddle once and for all. And that person is Terry Falls. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, what is your take on this? <laughs> Smugly. <laughs> Smugly shakes his head. Why not? The prosecution has no objection. Very well. Bailiff, bring the defendant to the witness stand. This is my last chance, Mr. Falls. My last chance to establish Dahlia's guilt. You're all I have left. Defendant, you've heard everything that's been said up to this point, yes? Uh, um, I don't believe it. No way! Talia died five years ago! Valerie betrayed me! Mr. Falls, I don't know what she said to you five years ago, but one thing is clear, Dahlia is very much alive. And you were used for two million dollars. That's not true! Mr. Falls, there's only one question I want, to, uh, want you to answer. Two days ago on Dusky Bridge, who did you meet? Was it Valerie Hawthorne or was it Dahlia Hawthorne? Dahlia, Dahlia, did you betray me? Five years ago, she promised. She promised never ever betray each other. Terry. Dahlia, it's true. It's true, you're alive! You don't trust me anymore? That makes me sad. Tell the truth, the real truth, I, I believed in you! I shouldn't need to say it, you should already know. But, there is one thing I will say. My life is in your hands right now, Terry. D Leah. I will allow Mr. Falls to testify once and only once. Well then, Mr. Falls, yours will be the final testimony in this trial, which I guess will go to the end, since we're about the end, I assume. Witness! Yeah! I'm sorry! I apologize! Water! Please, water! Huh? I can't talk! Need water! Oh well, I guess it'll have to be my coffee instead. At least it'll match the way he's probably feeling right now. Darker and bitterer than hell itself. Who Terry Falls saw? That day, 4 p.m., I stopped the car. I was in front of the bridge. She wasn't there, so I waited on the bridge. I watched my car from bridge. I never put no body in that car. Finally, one woman came. She stood in front of me. We talked, then she left. That was... That was Valerie, not my Dahlia! <sighs> Mr. Falls, you're covering for her. Do you think she would do the same for you? That's enough, Miss Fay. His last statement was a fitting way to end the trial, or final testimony at the trial. Well then, Miss Fay, please proceed with your cross-examination. If this is how you want it to end, Mr. Falls, another guilty verdict to go along with your death sentence? There's only one person who can stop it. You kidding, I think. I assume he has to give up because 4 p.m. That day, 4 p.m., the note said at 4.30. I stopped the car. She wasn't there. I washed the car. Finally, one woman came. We talked to left. Hmm. I'm trying to think. But there's one thing. She wasn't there. I waited on bridge. 
but the bridge is broken. And from the angle the photo was taken, the lady is obviously on the broken side. So I'm going to say perhaps I'm going to shoot. So when you got to the bridge, no one had arrived, huh? So you waited on the bridge. You're sure of that? Yeah, I'm sure. You're sure, huh? Well, then I'm sure too, Mr. Falls. I'm sure that you're lying. Huh? <coughs> oh, I would love to hear your rationale on this, Miss Faye. You want to know who arrived at the bridge first? Just look at this photo. Look at this photograph. It's perfectly clear. Obviously, the person that came first would be the one on the end of the bridge, right? But, but that's the victim at the end of the bridge. Brush my bangs. Precisely my point. In other words, Mr. Falls, you must have arrived at the bridge after she did. <laughs> um, Mr. Falls, please don't get so worked up. We just want the truth. I like that they added, like, another animation to it. I got there around four o'clock, it's true. I... I had somewhere to go. A special place. Did you go to this special place before you went to the bridge? Yeah. It's an old temple about 15 minutes from the bridge. Five years ago, me and Dahlia, we promised each other. We swore we wouldn't betray each other. She brought a memento she to represent our love. A memento? Five years ago, I hid it under the base of a tree there. The poison locket is here? Oh, uh, yeah. It's a special memory for me. This is it. This is what I went to get. This little bottle on the necklace is your memento. It's quite charming, but it looks empty. Your Honor, you heard what my client said. He arrived at the scene at four o'clock but he then left his car unattended and walked away. He was gone for approximately 30 minutes. <laughs> With that much time, Dahlia Hawthorne could have easily hidden the body in the trunk of his car. No! Indeed, there certainly was enough time for it. I've still got a chance. Mr. Falls, there's no mistaking it. <laughs> huh? Mr. Falls? He's dying? So this is how it ends. How Dahlia gets to walk free. But how the hell does... Does, does, like... That's enough. Please. Witness? I promised her. Five years ago. If it ever happens. That we can't trust each other no more, then... We're supposed to drink bottle. Uh. No! Stop the trial! Your Honor! We need a recess! I... I was stupid. Couldn't keep promise. So I did it. I drank this. No! We're so close! Just a little more! I was gonna prove your innocence! No. Don't want that. Don't Trust so. Maybe kill again. Kill sweet Dahlia. Again. Mr. Falls! Mr. Uh, Armando. Thanks for the coffee. Mr. Falls! Ha. Huh. And so my first trial ended, suddenly and tragically. It ended with no winners, only losers. I ended up with a wound that cut so deep into my soul I thought it'd never heal. I'm sure it was the same for the young prosecutor as well. But one person, the true criminal Dahlia Hawthorne. 
She left the courtroom with a secret smile on her demonically sweet face. I could have sworn that Mia never mentioned Hawthorne again. That Hawthorne never mentioned Mia again. Or did they? It's been a long time since I played the first episode. So it's possible there was more foreshadowing there, but still. But I feel like all of that would have led to more investigation, but maybe there was. But then somehow she got the necklace and handed it to Phoenix? Huh. Ah! He drank the poison in there, yep. This is why the necklace was handed off to Phoenix. Or rather, it ended up in Phoenix's possession. Unforgivable, that witch. Mr. Armando. We were so close to the truth. It was right there in front of us. You were just a little too soft, kitten. It's my fault! It's all my fault that Mr. Foles killed himself! Don't cry, kitten. You're gonna make my coffee all salty. I knew it! I knew it wasn't cut out for this! Mia? Don't you get it? You can't cry yet. Badass. The only t The only time a lawyer can cry is when it's all over. Mr. Armando! No matter how tough the case, no matter how bitter the memories, they always fade over time. Then you file them away and eventually forget them. Are we gonna come back to Phoenix? Yep. In the hospital, it seems. One year later, in this very same courthouse, I myself got wrapped up in that case. I knew Dahlia was a familiar name, but I just didn't trust myself. It's been too long. I shouldn't have taken a break. Yeah. There were supposedly... <gasps> there were supposedly two of them. Yes, you're right. They were supposed to both do it if they broke... Yes, you're right. Only after that did Dahlia Hawthorne get put on trial for her crimes. The verdict that was ultimately handed down to her was... Guilty. Guilty, of course. Naturally, when the verdict was read, she had a perfect, angelic smile on her face. It was finally all over. At least that's what I thought at the time. Unfortunately, I couldn't have been more wrong. It's been five years, but now something has happened that's made me remember all this. What? What do you remember? That's where it ends, goddammit. Well, we completed one episode in, within three hours. The question is, what happened to the poison in the second bottle? Yeah, because the other guy got... I, I honestly forget how the first trial ended. Bridge to the turnabout. I didn't get a good look at that cover. Darn it. But yeah, because there were two, but the poison was already used. The poison was already used, if I recall. And it was like trace amounts in there. It's been so long since I played the first one. But yeah, th this is super cool. Super, super cool. A little weird that, like... Again, it's been so long I forget... I feel like I would remember if Mia said that Hawthorne had been in the same diddly D as her and got away. Like, I feel Mia would have gone, she is a murderer, she is evil. Ha ha ha. Doug was electrocuted because she had poisoned Phoenix's meds and Doug warned Phoenix about Dahlia, yeah. That was a very twisty turny one, because I was wondering. I thought the game was going to force us into a loss, but no, it did something so much more interesting. And it's very interesting because Phoenix was almost a repeat of Terry. Phoenix was doing so much to defend Dahlia. It's very interesting. 
It was very, very interesting. And I do kind of like that we began with this one. Or, like, we began with the basically the future one rather than this one. Because it adds, like, a bit of, like, mystique to it. It's very cool. But, yeah, we finished this episode in one go. I assume the next one will be longer. Uh, probably a two or even three stream one, depending on how well we do. But, yeah. That, that one was really cool. The setup was cool. Everything was cool. The fact that we brought her back, they brought Dahlia back in, and it's like, it really made the case interesting. So we brought somebody in who we know is a murderer, but we she isn't convicted yet, so she has to be let off. But at the same time, like, it's just super cool. I also kind of like that Edgeworth is like even, I say like a lot because I'm an idiot, but it's super cool that Edgeworth is more scummy in this case, it feels like, than compared to how he was in the first game. Like, he intentionally is withholding evidence until it's ready to spring on us, and he just has all these contingencies. It's very reminiscent of Edgeworth from the first one, but this one felt a lot more... He's after... <coughs> Excuse me. I sneezed. Yeah, my, body my body betrays me. Yeah. But yeah, that was a really good case. That was really, really good. I'm going to save again just to mm, satisfy my paranoia, but that was a really good one. That was a really good case. If you can believe it, there's even more to Dahlia Phoenix debacle. Oh boy! I do like that there is a through line through, these ga through this game. And that they're also bringing in Godot for that first one. But I still want to know what happened to the Godot. Because obviously he leaves Grossberg between what happened then... Was he the one that was poisoned? Could it be that... Because I need to remember the timeline. Phoenix was in the courthouse at the same time as Dahlia, when Dahlia was trying to get rid of her poison necklace so it wouldn't be found on her and submitted as evidence. Could she have somehow poisoned Godot's coffee? Maybe. That's the thing for later. This is because of Von Karma's direct influence. Uh, bless you. Thank you. I, that is another thing. His outfit, complete Von Karma. Complete Von Karma all through his outfit. So it's very interesting to see that later on, he kind of shed Von Karma's influence more and more and more. Armando. I call him Godot because I think that's what he goes by as prosecutor in the rest of the game. Again, I like that he's like Armando. Something else I forget his name. Godot. And all of them end in O. It's interesting. He's my, so far, I think he might be my favorite prosecutor. He's just neat. He's just cool. But yeah, we're going to end things there. We went through an entire episode. And we have one more episode to go, I assume, unless this game wants to just brain blast me with a seventh. Uh, who knows? But yeah, th this is interesting. And I just, I wonder what the final case will be. Phoenix was presumably in hospital for some reason, because there was an IV bag. And he was looking over cases and he mentions something reminding him so this will be very interesting to see next time i think i'm just like next stream we're going to he is the best prosecutor edgeworth is good but godot is just he's nice he's cool he, he has vibes man but yes this was a very good a very interesting and nice like case i did slip up once or twice but i like this this is good and yeah, we're going to continue. And hey, everybody, since it's the new year, this is the first stream of the new year, in fact, I have attempted to create a schedule, and I will try to stick to this schedule as best I can. Like, I will try at the very least to do those streams, which are Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday, all at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. So if people want to tune in, I'm going to try and keep that schedule as best I can. I might sneak in a few extra streams if I'm feeling like it and have the time and might have a game specifically for unscheduled. Because then I might make it so that, like, as I'm pl playing certain games, I might have in my, like, YouTube description or the schedule section of my Twitch channel, try to tell you what games will be played on what days, maybe. There is a game that actually shows the Von Karma Edgeworth dynamic. That is cool. That is neat. 
I can't wait to get to that. I do also plan to eventually get to the uh, Ace Attorney Investigations, the game that focuses on Edgeworth, I think, post Ace Attorney. So that will... I wonder if that might be it, since it focuses on Edgeworth, maybe. I don't... I, I honestly don't think that they would focus on the Von Karma... Edgeworth dynamic in the Apollo games, or the Phoenix games after the Apollo games, but we'll have to see. Have to see indeed. But yes, uh, we will, I'll try to set up a whole schedule and like set games for what days that I'll stream. Uh, right now I'll probably, more than, hmm, I don't know, I might think of, I might think of, Something, because today is Monday, and the next stream should be Wednesday if I keep to my schedule, if I'm not interrupted. But I might start playing Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Sky on Wednesday. And that way, Phoenix Wright can be Monday, Saturday, and then Pokemon Mystery Dungeon in the middle until we fe finish Phoenix Wright. And then after that, I might move... Pokemon Mystery Dungeon around. But yeah, keep if you care to super know about what I do, schedule, I will try to keep updated, and I will try to keep to my schedule this year. I'm going to try and really focus my energy and be motivated this year to actually do things. Write more, stream more, and stream regularly at specific times and days so that I can be somewhat professional. Draw more also. I'm also working on a script for a YouTube video. So I'm going to also try and make that a thing and try to do all the things I want to do before I drop dead. <laughs> but yes, thank you very much for watching, everybody. If you want to subscribe to my main edited YouTube content channel, uh, that was a, a brain waffle there, bleh. But if you want to subscribe to my main YouTube channel that hosts edited content to see if I eventually upload edited content, it is Neon Icy Wings. As well, if you want to see me stick to my schedule of streaming, you can catch me on Twitch or YouTube. Twitch is Neon Icy Wings, YouTube is Neon Icy Games. And all past streams can be found uploaded to the Neon Icy Games channel eventually. If I have a backlog of videos, they usually go up every two days. Unless I'm feeling generous and then upload them day after day. Eh, meh. But as for everything else, all of these and links and more can be found in my link tree, linktr.ee slash neonicywings, or just found in link places like descriptions, bios, and, well, link, link sections of various sites. Links to my art, similar to my little character in the corner, as well as writing and my Patreon can all be found through my link tree. So if you want to see more art from me, read stories I write, or be generous and help me survive a little bit of the evils of the world, you can do that. But either way, I just hope to see you dudes next time. Bye bye, and have a happy new year.